Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. Guys, how we doing? We're good. We oh, good. Good. Skip. We're not good. I was going to say. What do you mean? I, I, I stayed that. up for that? No. For that? Did I tell you what was going to well, happen? Well, well, why did they do that? It's late for us. I told you what was going to happen. All you got to do is just oh. set your clock. Yeah, you me. told me Kevin Durant was going to get hurt. No, 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 I told you they were going to win. See all that other Did stuff. he predict that yesterday? Yes, yes. No. That. Uh, we have a lot to get to on today's <laughs> show. We need to talk about LeBron's feelings. How is he feeling after more he, Lakers he has no feelings. drama? He is it all Kyrie's fault that the Celtics <laughs> are going home? But we are going to start at Oracle. Let's get right to the third quarter and the biggest moment of the game, guys. Kevin Durant, he hit a jumper, then immediately reached for his leg. The initial fear was that he tore his Achilles, but the Warrior said it's just a calf strain. KD was done for the night and will have an MRI today. But the Rockets couldn't take advantage. James Harden had 31 points, but took just one shot in the final eight minutes of the game. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green all stepped up in Durant's absence. And with the Warriors up by three in the closing seconds, Clay made a layup to seal the win, but it did look like he stepped out of bounds on the play. It wasn't called after the game. Here's Steve Kerr on life without KD. We're all obviously, um, you know, disappointed for him um, and um, excited about the win, but, um, you know, concerned for Kevin and disappointed for him. You know, he's had been on this incredible playoff run, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our guys for pulling the game out, and we'll, you know, we'll see how Kevin's doing tomorrow. I apologize to my mom, who uh, oh, yeah. is probably watching, but our guys are Giants, like that was an unbelievable victory tonight. What's that? Yes, yes, after dark. I'm a different guy right now. <laughs> All right, Shannon, are you surprised the Warriors won last night without KD? No, because we saw them just, what, Skip, I think a week or two before the end of the regular season, mm -hmm. go to uh, win a game in Houston yeah. without Kevin Durant. March 13th. So I'm, not, I'm even less surprised because if you think about it, in this round of the playoffs, four of their five starters had gone to two championships, won a championship before Kevin Durant even got there. What mm -hmm. Kevin Durant makes them basically almost unbeatable in a seven-game series. Mm -hmm. They have a two-time league MVP. One of those times he won it unanimous. That's uh, uh, Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. They have one of the best two-way players in the game. That's Klay Thompson. Draymond Green can do a lot of things. Great. So, no, I'm not. Iggy was a finals, is a finals MVP. So, no, I'm not surprised. What I'm most surprised by is how poorly Houston played after Kevin Durant went out. Considering at one point, Skip, they go on a 10-0 run to cut the lead. They let Golden State go on a 15-0 run to get up to a 20-point lead. They whittle it all the way back down. Kevin Durant leaves. I said, okay, they got him now. I said, oh, I'm in trouble. Skip's going to come in here and be gloating tomorrow. Well, it, I'm not going to gloat if Kevin Durant No, 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 no. I said you're going to be gloating that you won. You don't really, I mean, yeah, you don't want, no one wants well, to see I, Kevin I couldn't Durant. gloat w without that guy. Yeah, but you're going to go, you're going to yeah. win. You like winning more than anything. But anyway, as I was saying, and then all of a sudden it happened, Skip. Right before my very eyes, Skip, you know, I've gone to Vegas and seen the magic shows, seen uh, uh, Siegfried and Roy, who they, they no longer do their act. Mm -hmm. Uh, Penn and Teller. I've never seen a guy disappear without using a sheet or a box as well as James Harden can in meaningful basketball games. Mm. He disappears and you still see him. Mm. Skip, this unacceptable that he takes three shots in the fourth quarter. He takes one shot in the final, what, eight minutes of the ball game. Skip, that's unacceptable. CP3 has been a no-show. Clint Capella last night, you know what, this is why I don't like plus minus, because the plus minus says Clint mm -hmm. Capella was the best Houston Rocket yep. at a plus eight. Mm. He was good and terrible last night, Skip. Mm. Missing layups left and right, and we talk about Dwight Howard. Oh, Dwight Howard never had post moves. Clint Capella is worse. This mm. is all you have to do. You had the lead. Skip, you win this game, and guess what? You're going back to Houston on Friday for a chance to get to the Western Conference Finals, and you lay an egg. You know in a situation like this, if you go back and chart the chart since Kevin Durant's been there, when he's out, mm -hmm. Steph Curry is ultra-aggressive. Klay Thompson is ultra-aggressive because there are more shots for them to... Now, 
They don't have to worry about Kevin Durant's 20 shots that he's going to get up. Mm -hmm. Kevin, uh, uh, Kevon Looney's going to come in. Skip, he's not going to shoot the ball mm -hmm. unless you pass it to him right up under the basket. So you know these guys are going to get aggressive. And what do you do? All of a sudden, you let Steph get wide open threes. You let Clay get wide open threes. That's what I'm most surprised by. Skip, I'm not surprised that they won this game without Kevin Durant because we saw them win 73 games without Kevin Durant mm -hmm. and then add Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant basically makes them unbeatable in a seven-game series. Mm -hmm. But they're more than capable of winning games mm -hmm. if Ke Kevin Durant does not play. Hmm. So, my no-sleep, gutless takeaway from last <laughs> night is, if the Houston Rockets can't win that game, get them out of my sight. Just write them off. Let's just stop it right here. I don't want to see them get embarrassed at home once again by a team without Kevin Durant. But now I'm going to make a bizarre statement about a bizarre break I think the Golden State Warriors got last night. Just for the record, the best player on the planet, now Kevin Durant, was doing something in these playoffs through 10 games no one has ever done in the history of the NBA playoffs. And that's go 50% 50. 50 from the floor, 40% from three, and 90% from the free throw line while averaging 35 points a game. Never been done before. That's how great he has been, how dominating he has been. Now for my bizarre statement. <laughs> I believe Golden State would have lost that game if Kevin Durant had stayed healthy through the fourth quarter, if he had not been hurt. You might be right. Because I wrote off the Rockets at halftime. It looked like Golden State had flipped the switch and turned back into Golden State, mm -hmm. all caps. In the first half, they fell behind by 14, did the Rockets at halftime, and I was getting ready to go to bed. I was thinking about it. <laughs> so was I. At halftime. <laughs> and then, right on schedule, Golden State, at home, fell victim to are we there yet syndrome huh. that they have been suffering from all season long, especially at home. Is that enough? Did we do enough? And they took their foot right off the accelerator, and they weren't diving for loose balls anymore. And what happened? Here came Houston. I was actually sitting on my bed, and then I, I stood up, and I said, wait, wait. wait a second. I, I can't, I can't, can't turn go this to off. This. They go on a 22-9 to nine run, and all of a sudden, Golden State turned back into lowercase, all lowercase Golden State. <laughs> they lost their flow. They lost their rhythm. They lost their connectedness on offense as they waited for that seven-foot monster to say, okay, I got you. I'll take over, right? Yep. You, you going to do it, Kevin? Or, or should we try? Should we keep <laughs> trying? And all of a sudden, Steph and Clay, Clay had had an early hot streak, went completely crazy cold. And here came the Rockets cutting it all the way to one point when Kevin Durant finally made his first field goal of the third quarter. Late in the third quarter with 2-11 left, Kevin Durant said, okay, I got you. And he goes straight up on the baseline for that jump shot. And when he made it, he snarled. He gave it one of his, okay, I got this. You guys are dead now because here I come. And then he took one big step and he pushed off on his right calf. And you know the rest of the story. He looked behind him like, somebody kicked me? Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know about you, but I said Achilles. Achilles, I, I thought Achilles, Achilles rupture. Yeah. That's, it's classic. Mm -hmm. It's textbook Achilles. Yeah. Did somebody luck. kick me? Yep. Yeah. And it's just a terrible, it's the worst injury in sports. It's yeah. the most mysterious. It's a six-month rehab when you didn't deserve it because there's no warning sign, as you know. You don't have a sore Achilles, and all of a sudden it goes. Oh, it just goes so for no apparent reason. It's non-contact. You, you don't even do anything. You, you don't even make a dangerous move. You just press down to push off. Right. And it just ruptures. Right. It ruptures and rolls up the back of your leg all the way up to the back of your knee. <laughs> if, in fact, that's what happened. Right. The shock to me was Golden State pretty soon announces and puts it up on Twitter from the PR staff. It's, it's a calf strain. Yep. Really? Are we supposed to believe that? Because it's hard to believe. Right. Was it a calf tear? Mm -hmm. It looked pretty bad, it right? It looked pretty bad, yes. Okay, so obviously you would think Golden State would be deflated and devastated, and you would think James Harden and company would say, yep. ooh, sharks we got, got this. Sparkling. Blood in the water. Ooh, we finally got them. Karma just came back around because what happened at the CB3 end of game last five year. last year? CB3 yeah. pulls his hamstring, and you know what happened in game six and seven? Wipeouts yep. happened, and James Harden did not happen because he went six for 25 from three in the last two games. And to James's credit, I got to give him this. 
down the stretch of the third quarter, it looked like he was trying to take over. Mm -hmm. And he did score five quick points, including a really sweet little floater that he yeah. made from about six feet. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That put them ahead by one point for the first time the whole game. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened from that moment on that was late in the third quarter? Uh, the rest of the way, it was 36 to 30 Golden State. Why was that? Because Steph Curry reannounced himself to the world. He said, Guess what? Now it's my team again. Yes. Guess what? Remember me? I, I was a two time MVP. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The Golden State Warriors looked at me like they turned back into these 73 and 9 record setting, record breaking. Golden State Warriors, Ball right? Moving. Ball, Ball moving, moving everywhere. And all of a sudden, it looked to me like Steph and Clay were shooting freely. Like they weren't looking over their shoulder to see if the seven-foot monster was clapping for the ball, right? right? Mm -hmm. It looked like it all freed up, and here they came back. Yeah. And to your point about James Harden, so I look at the fourth quarter stats, and if, if I read these to Daryl Morey and I said, this is what your team <laughs> did in the fourth quarter, and again, his whole soul is, is built on trying to beat Golden State. But again, the Rockets in the fourth quarter made nine of 16 shots. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. They, they made three of eight from three, which is okay. It's, it's right. not terrible. Six of seven from the free throw line. They got seven rebounds to Golden State seven. Okay, well, when you say, okay, that's, that's not bad. Sure. Right. But in the center of that was what you homed in on. Where's James? Well, this was the opposite of what we usually see from James. Usually he's shooting you out of the game because he's just gunning up three-point yes. shots and they're bricking left and right. Right. To your point, he just decided – uh-oh, I'm, I'm not going to shoot us out of this game. Well, the corollary to that is that means you can't shoot your team into a win, right? right correct. He just went completely quiet in the fourth quarter for that stretch from the 10-minute mark all the way down to he made a uncontested layup 18, with 16, yeah, 18, 16, 16 18 seconds yeah, from the goal. Okay, yeah. okay, so that's it. So you just go quiet in there, and I think you only attempt one other shot because for, for the, the fourth quarter, you make two out of three, but – but again, you, you're you're too quiet. James and, Harden, three in a in the quarter that you gotta have. Three attempts. Three attempts. Okay. Come on. James, where are you? So to your disappearing, usually he doesn't quite disappear. He just goes up in flames, mm -hmm. you know, like in cold flames. Right. But in this case, he there, there's no second scoring option because Chris Paul, I gotta say it. He just looks old to me. Yeah. Not, I, I'm not uh, saying he's washed up old, but he looks like an older player right. to me, right? Well, you know what's good? We got seduced by last year because yeah. he really played well. He did. But Chris Paul That's has the kind best of been in decline for a minute. He's been in decline for a long minute this whole year. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, you need one of those two to come up big, and neither one of them do because they combine – for eight points in the fourth quarter, and they go 0 for 3 from 3, those two together. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Steph and Clay are scoring 19 points, and they're going 3 of 5 from 3. And it doesn't sound like big numbers, but it's way bigger than what those two were right. doing for Houston, right? Yeah, it, it is. And to your point, Skip, I think when KD goes out, I think we forget just how good Steph Curry is because yep. Kevin Durant is, is – and the way he's played in these playoffs, he's been transcendently yeah. great. Yeah. And we forget just how good Steph Curry is. And so Steph now says, I'm free. I don't have to worry about it. So Because now he and, uh, he and Clay can get whatever shot they want, whatever they want, and not have to worry about taking off KD. Because KD normally, had, in these playoffs, yep. KD's had it going throughout yep. with the exception of game one against uh, the Clippers. So now they can be themselves. Yep. And you saw the moment he left, look at Steph Curry's body language. Look at his demeanor. Look at Clay. They're like, oh, oh, y'all think we about to fall apart. Oh, we got some for you. Take watch this. this. Watch this. Steph Curry, from the moment Kevin left the floor, limped off the floor, yes. he scored 16 points. And up until then, he'd had another raggedy game. Uh, another he, he one. Just, it was just, he was four out of 14 up to that point, mm -hmm. And he just didn't look like himself. But he hasn't looked like himself for a while right. mm -hmm. until Kevin left the floor. And I'm not even making the case they're better without Kevin Durant because they're not better without Kevin Durant. Steph but they're better. different. They're different. You, you go back to the old roles when you don't have Kevin and you don't have the big guy. You don't have DeMarcus, right? right? You don't have Well, Kevin, Kevin is your bailout, Skip. Yeah. So, now, so if everybody else is struggling, you got a guy, you can dump it to him, and nobody can do anything nope. about it because he can shoot over anybody. Nope. He can get any shot that he wants. So to, 
you know, Steve Kerr seemed a little deflated after the game. You know, Steve Kerr's body language and his tone after the game indicated to me that Kevin Durant is hurt much worse than they're letting on. Right. Because he seemed Worrisome. he seemed yeah. resigned to it, mm -hmm. but but he did want to plant his emotional flag on what his guys did. So he used that quote from the Liverpool manager off the big win over Barcelona the night yeah. right. the day before. Yeah. And and again. My guys are effing giants, yeah. and they were. You know what? They were. Yeah. They just stood up and said, "No, nope, no, not in our house, mm -mm. not you they just guys." Kept their champions. Yeah. Like I said, four of the five starters have been won a championship. They won seventy three games. They're yeah. battle tested. They're battle so they weren't going to lay down. If if Houston thought that Golden State was going to lay down once yep. Kevin Durant left this ball game, they're sadly mistaken. Okay. But I don't like the way they came out, Skip. They let they let uh, Golden State get five offensive rebounds in yep. the first quarter. Yep. Nine second chance points. What the hell is Clint Capella doing, Skip? He said, now he the one that said, I won't go to state. I know, and he just looks lost. He looks terrible. He looks terrible. I, I agree with you. He doesn't look like he's worthy of the stage. This is too big for him. Or that $80 million yeah. contract. Or that contract. P I, Tuck is giving you everything he's got. P mm -hmm. PJ has been unbelievable. Yep. Since game one, when he scored zero points, he's been unbelievable. Averaging double figures, the rebounds and points, you can, you can win with that. And remember, Eric Gordon was ice cold for three quarters, yes. and then in the fourth quarter, he came alive and made all three of his shots in two threes, yes. two of two from three. Well, you can't ask for much more you from him. You can't ask for more than that. Okay. You can, I can ask more from James Harden in the fourth quarter. Oh. I can ask more from uh, uh, CP3. A lot more. So, we got to examine two plays late that did finally determine the outcome of a game that I think Golden State was going to win anyway, but Steph came down with 53 seconds left, and it's a four-point game, and they finally forced Steph into a bad shot by anybody's standards, even his standards, and he shoots this little floater, and look what the end of it is. You have to get this rebound. You, somebody has to grab that, and he did. It sure. goes right back. I know it's a long rebound, but one of those three Rockets has to come away with the yeah. basketball, yeah. and maybe you got a chance because there's still plenty you of look time at effort. left. Look at that effort. Effort, Clint Capella. effort, effort. Look at Clint Capella's effort. effort. You, tell effort. Me he, you tell me he's trying to get effort. And, and what happens? They, they jump into Steph, and they foul, foul him. him. And so now the four-point game becomes a six-point game. But they rally, James makes a shot, and finally you've cut it to three, and there's the loose ball over in the corner. Right. And obviously, Clay is out of bounds when he tries to save it back right. in. His foot is out of bounds, so it should have been called there. But because the he just throws the ball away, Skip. Yeah. He threw it away. And it goes right to Eric Gordon. And you have to come up with the basketball. If you want that game, you're going to get that ball, it. right? Yeah. It goes. Uh, yeah. Eric Gordon just butterfingers it. Yeah. It just goes right through his hands. If you want it, again, you're going to get the ball with four seconds left and a chance to call timeout and advance to the other end. Correct. And have a, a three-point attempt, attempt to tie for overtime. Correct. Okay. Yes. So did did they get? Robbed. I don't know if robbed on the clay. Sh mm. Should the ref have seen it? He's watching the ball. He's not looking right. down at the floor. I'm but sure it's funny how he's looking down at the floor because I remember P.J. Tucker hit one in the uh, corner three and they happened to be looking at the floor. You saw that was Gil. Now, they, P.J. Tucker took a three in the I corner. Know. They're looking at his feet. Oh, you out of bounds. Now, yeah. they're looking at Clay he, Thompson. He, he got it right. He was yeah, stamped, yeah. stepping on And there. if he'd have looked at the feet there, he'd have got that one right. <laughs> kind of like the Kevin Durant. You remember the Kevin Durant was up under the side bench? And they said he was still inbound with those size 42 shoes. I don't know, I Golden do. State get that home cooking, Skip. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I can't complain about this because it just no. felt like Golden State. It shouldn't even Steph, come down to this. Did, True. They just said, no, not in our house. We got this. Steph said, remember me? Remember how Kevin Durant said, I'm Kevin Durant? Well, that was Steph saying, I'm, I'm Steph. Steph Curry. Yeah. Right? I still, Houston, you win this game. You go home with a chance to close them it. out. This is it. It's right there and on you a get, silver and you platter. Goofed it up. Here, you you can yes. have this. J Skip, this is what you know. When I say James Harden disappeared, he scored 31, but in the meaningful ball games, you remember Game Six against San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You remember the game he had 12 yeah. turnovers against Golden State. Well, how about Game Seven last year yeah. at his ha in his house? That's the disappearing game seven. Act. Really? Okay, he went two for 13 from three. Even when he was coming off the bench yeah. in OKC, you remember the finals? You remember how he disappeared in that one, Skip? He did. It seems to be a reoccurring theme. He, he's made for the regular season, not so much the postseason. So you had the opportunity of a lifetime yes. of your career yeah. right here before you. You and Chris Paul. Chris Paul's had nothing but bad luck and bad breaks through playoffs run after run. Yeah. He's gotten hurt. Blake Griffin's gotten hurt. Different teammates. Tyson Chandler got hurt in New Orleans. It's one after another. And now here.
the, the best it. player on the planet got hurt. Can you can you finish? No, you can't finish no. this. You can't close it. So now we wait uh, on the MRI about Kevin Durant, and I just don't know. I'm not ruling out torn Achilles. I I, yeah. I know they they, they said say it's not, but if it, he got a he got a pretty good tear in his calf. So if it's not in the torn Achilles, he got a pretty good. Okay, if you're right about that, he's gone for the rest of the playoffs. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't, I don't see him come because it's such a fast turnaround. Friday, Sunday. No, but I'm talking about for you're the whole rest. Oh, of for the whole, oh, oh, for the whole playoff. If, if you're right about a calf tear, you're, you're, I don't think you can when, come when, back. When would weeks. game one of the Western Conference Finals be? Probably sure. Tuesday. I'm not sure. It would depend how far this oh, one goes. Yeah. I, I, don't I don't know. Yeah, you know, you're right. Wednesday? I would say Tuesday because uh, uh, That's still a quick they play around. tonight. Yeah, Tuesday because they, uh, uh, the Nuggets play tonight. And then they will play again Saturday. Yeah. So I, I would assume I would assume Sunday. I mean, uh, Tuesday of the following week. Well, to your point about what happened on March 13th, there was no KD, and Clay scored 30, and Steph scored 24, and James Harden had another two of 12 from three, which we he's want to do. Yes. And Golden State won 106-104 at Houston with no KD. So do they feel good about their chances of winning Game Six with yeah. no KD? You better believe they do. Yeah. Huh. I mean, going him, Skip. He's going to shoot. I mean, uh, the percentage, because if you see the degree of difficulty of the three he's taking, now, not only is he taking 27, 28, 29 footers, yep. he's taking step back with hands in his face. Yep. So that's not an easy shot. It's not like, I would almost rather him take a contested three yep. because he had three cracks last night. He was wide open yep. and didn't come close. To he him. had one, wa- wa- like nobody around in front of short arm. Yep. Yep. He's starting to short arm his free throws. Oh. You know, it's, tired. It, it's one thing to do to score 60 some Tuesday night in Sacramento, and it's another thing to have that. Well, he was right? tired because, you know, he checked out and for mm. and, and about 8 18, and then they put yeah. him back in, I think 7 08, skip at 7 08 mark. And he's like, he got a minute break. But as Edmund Hillary said, the first guy to climb Mount Everest, mm-hmm. says the man that can push himself when the effort become most painful. Mm-hmm. Mm. We'll be waiting. Fatigue makes cowards of us all, said mm. Vince Lombardi. Mm. No, Roger Bannister mm. said that. No, that was Vince Lombardi. Oh, I know. Oh, you, I don't believe James was a coward, Skip, mm. but he's going to have to do something in these meaningful games, yeah. game five, game six, game sevens, mm-hmm. when he has an opportunity. He's an MVP. Mm. He gets held to a different standard than, say, a role player. Mm. So he's the guy. This is your moment. Okay. This is what Michael Jordan and the Birds and the Magics and the LeBrons. Well, fortunately for him, it didn't end last night. He gets another crack at game Boy, six. Boy, Skip, he better drop 40. They better win. Tomorrow night in Houston. They got to do something. This is mm. his legacy on the line. Oh, here. yeah, yeah. Right. How he's doing, I mean, he, he's got a lot to do tomorrow. Uh, another guy who might be a little upset today, guys, LeBron. New day, new is Lakers drama. Is it time drama for him to yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. discuss time, that yes. now? Don't forget, yes. you can check us out every day on the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius XM. We'll be right back. No mercy. Hey, everyone. Jenny Taft here with a quick word from Ancestry DNA. Ever wonder where your family comes from? You can discover more about them and learn about your story by combining the Ancestry DNA test with billions of historical family records. Ancestry DNA gives you so much more than just the places you are from. Ancestry connects you to the places in the world where your story started using precise geographic detail and clear-cut historical insights. You can even trace your ancestors' journeys over time, following how and why your family moved from place to place. And to amplify your results, you can start a free trial on Ancestry and build a tree so your ancestors become more than just a name. They've combined DNA results with over 100 million family trees and billions of records to give you more insight into your genealogy and origins. Only Ancestry can tell you such a rich story with unique features that give a more complete picture about a person, like events that shaped them, how they made a living, and what they excelled in. It's so easy to get started. I cannot wait to see my results. This is something I've always wanted to do. See where I'm from. Learn more about my family. And they make it so easy. It's a simple saliva test. You pop it in the mail and you get your results back. It's that easy. For a limited time now through May 13th, go to Ancestry.com slash Undisputed today to get your Ancestry DNA kit for $59. That's Ancestry.com slash Undisputed for $59. Ancestry.com slash Undisputed. No mercy. Well, guys, break.
breaking news. Uh, well, maybe not so breaking. The Lakers are still a mess. We all thought LeBron's old coach, Ty Lu would be the next head coach, but yesterday Lou decided to pass on the job. Reportedly, the Lakers only offered Lou a three-year, $18 million deal, but he demanded a five-year deal, and the team wanted Lou to hire Jason Kidd as one of his assistants. Now, the Lakers are back to looking for a head coach, and they're expected to interview Lionel Hollins, Frank Vogel, and Mike Woodson. Shannon, what does all of this mean for LeBron? LeBron James is thinking, like, man, what the hell I got myself into? <laughs> Correct. What is going on? Like, this ain't what, I didn't sign up for this. He did not. And, you know, you know, it was reported Rick Bruker came on our show and mm -hmm. said that Jeannie thought at one point in time about she trading did. LeBron. Correct. If I'm LeBron, I might have, hey, Jeannie, you remember you were thinking about doing the season trading me? Yeah. How about you go ahead and follow through with that? Yep. Get me up out of here. Because, Skip, Skip, it becomes very, very obvious. If you put people in position that they're unqualified to deal with, guess what happens? This is what happens. I'm looking at this. See, this is what they did, Skip. They tried to be slick. <laughs> they tried to be slick. They knew Ty Lu was not going to accept a three-year deal. I After agree. he saw Luke Walton get a five-year deal. After he saw Monty Williams get a five-year deal. You gave Luke Walton a five-year deal to become the Lakers head coach. Mm -hmm. So we know he's not going to do that. And then we're going to make demands that you hire this. We're not going to let you do your staff. Yeah. We're going to demand that you hire people that we want to put on your staff. Mm -hmm. So they know. At least they can say, see, we offered the job to Ty Lue, but he turned us down, LeBron, knowing good and well that was going to be the case all along. Come on, Lakers. I mean, I thought once they got rid of uh, 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 the brother, Jim Buss, Jeannie was going to come in and clean the thing up. Yep. Yeah. Are they twins? Because they handling things the same way. Mm. It's a mess. Mm. Skip, how do, you, how do you convince a free agent to come in that mess? That's Even if you're going to play alongside LeBron James, how do you convince someone to say, you know what, come to the Lakers. We got this thing. No one's mm -hmm. going. This is a sh Boy, Skip, let me tell you what. I'm going to say, Jeannie Buss, this is what I'm going to do for you. Because I don't have a trade, no, uh, 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 no trade clause. I'm going to give it to you the 3rd of July. If you don't land Kawhi, Kyrie, that's KD, fair. I need you to get me up out of here. Yeah, that's fair. I would agree. Because uh, this, this is, Skip, this is utterly ridiculous. And people, like, they always want to criticize. Oh, LeBron be involved. <laughs> he ain't involved in this. And you see what happened, Skip? This is why he needs to be involved. Because they don't know what the hell they doing. Nope, they do not. This is, man, this is so, Skip, this is so embarrassing. This, for a once proud franchise, mm -hmm. you know, the Lakers, in name only. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that you have going. Your purple and gold, and it says Lakers. That's it. That's it. <sighs> I agree with you times 10. Wow. I'm going to say it again. I, I, from my heart, I feel sorry for LeBron James. He had no idea he was getting himself into this. No. So let's get it straight. Magic Johnson just said, I'm out. And he, on a knee-jerk moment, just said, I'm, I'm announcing to you, media people, right here, right now, impromptu. I'm, I'm out. Yeah. I've had enough. Yeah, I'm good. I can't stomach any more of this. That's basically what he was saying. So they identified Monty Williams as their number one coaching candidate, right. and they loaded up the private jet with the whole family and Linda Rambis, the shadow owner of the Lakers, and her husband Kurt Rambis, who is now operating as the CEO of the Lakers and Rob Polinka and Jeannie and all the brothers and they all flew to Philadelphia to check out Monty Williams and I'm pretty sure they all signed off on that's our guy right got to get him because he's not a LeBron guy but LeBron knows him enough that LeBron will be okay with yeah. it right, right? Yeah. and what did Monty do he chose to go to the worst team in the NBA instead of the Lakers he chose Phoenix so now they're back to option two, plan B, but they don't like plan B. Nope. Because they have basically declared war on your man, LeBron James. Yeah. They have. Yeah. They've declared war. We are not going to concede any power to LeBron James. He says he doesn't want to be involved, so let's just keep him at arm's length. Let's just pay lip service. Let's go through the motions of lowballing poor Ty Lue. Yes. Let's use him and abuse him emotionally by saying, let's string him along for a little while, but we're going to lowball him so bad that there's no way he's going to accept our lousy offer. Correct. Too few years at too Insulting. little money. Right. Yeah. Because it was a complete insult, and he still owed $10 million from the Cleveland Cavaliers, right. and he's like, I'm, I'm good. Right. I don't need your circus. Why would I do this? Yeah, why would I do right. this when you're treating me with that little respect? Right. Well, it was, it was really plan 
C that they were operating on because they just needed to get through plan B and and show LeBron that we tried. Yeah. We tried. He, he lose yeah. turned us down. Hey, he, he's out <laughs> on us. Right? Wrong. No, that's not what's happening. And now I hear all these candidates. You know, I like Lionel Hollins. I, I've been around really? him. Really? But, but you, do you realize he, he's he been out for three seasons? He has not coached in the NBA that's since he Lakers coached as coach the Lakers head coach. Mike Woodson, I like Mike Woodson. He did a, a really a bang-up job for that Knicks team that went on did won 55 games in yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. But he hasn't been a head coach, Mike Woodson, now for five years. So is that really the answer? I don't know. Maybe it is. Frank Vogel. I don't know. <laughs> so what else, What were they also trying to do to Ty Luke? They were trying to force on him their other candidate, Jason Kidd, but they were a little shaky on how Jason had handled the kids in Milwaukee, right. the growth of Giannis yeah. and company, their young players. All they so, got to do is look at Jason Kidd's resume, Skip. Look at Milwaukee. He got fired. And a year after he gets fired, they're in the Eastern Conference They take Finals. off. They're doing this. No. <laughs> No, you're right. Did he okay. teach them some building block principles, sort of like Mark Jackson did Golden State? Maybe some. He teach them if you need a timeout, you bump into me when I got a cup of water, <laughs> they spill it on the floor, and they call a timeout. But oh, Jason, okay. Jason is, he knows how to play basketball. Yes. He has basketball genius to him. Okay. And nobody played harder than Jason Kidd did, but nobody was more demanding as a head coach. So would he fit here and work with the Laker kids? I don't know. Maybe if he could be the number one assistant. But Ty Lu, th there was reports that he said it'd be okay, but I don't think no, he loved the idea they, of having Jason yeah, Kidd. We just saw how this played out. Yep. We just saw this in the NFL. Hugh Jackson did what, Skip? He hired two former head coaches, and what happened? Nothing good. Now everybody's gone. Well, they're all gone. So Taylor Lewis like, hold on, wait a minute. If I'm going to be the head coach, shouldn't I be able to bring my own staff in? Isn't that how it works? It, it's like, Skip, look, if I apply for a job, the guy just got fired from the job, and I know you had just given him a four-year deal, and I know what he was making. Yep. You actually think, so what you're going to do, you don't really want to hire me. You gotta tell you what we're gonna do. This is what we'll do. We'll give you two years when I know the guy just had a five year deal. Yep. We're gonna pay you this when I know the guy just got that. Mm. So, in other words, you're telling me you offered me the job knowing I'm not going to take it, okay. but you can at least say, well, I did offer Shannon the job yep. knowing Shannon wasn't gonna take it. Mm. Don't invite me to a cookout. Uh, uh, Shannon, won't you come to the cookout? Mm. It's a low country boy. Mm. Skip, I'm allergic to shellfish. Mm. You already know I'm not going to come. So basically, mm. you're telling me, well, we did invite him. Mm. No damn well I'm not coming to no low country boy because I'm allergic to shellfish. Mm. Man, but the Lakers are, this is, Skip, mm. I am so disappointed in the Lakers. Mm. Man, LeBron, you got to go. You know what? I, they don't even deserve to be called the Lakers anymore. we got to get a new name for them because they've disgraced the tradition. Yep. The late show, yeah. showtime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Out of time. Reality. Yeah, out of time show. is correct. I don't know. You know what? I think they're angling for. I'm going to throw this out again. This will not shock me. Hmm. Kurt Rambis has been a head coach oh in this boy. league. And you don't think they would love Kurt to become their head coach where they would have their man in charge? In two years at Minnesota, two full years at Minnesota, yeah. he won 32 games. 32 and won 32. That's what Kurt went. And when he filled in for with, Derek with Fisher. Kevin Love as your yes. Not years guy. we like to yeah. remember. And remember, if you think about it, uh, uh, Ke uh, uh, Kurt Rambis, mm -hmm. He was at the Lakers. Why? Because his wife is best friend with Jeannie. Okay, boom. He's with the Knicks. Why? Because Jeannie's boyfriend was Phil Jackson, and he made Derek Fisher put him on his staff. So now the words... I mean, Phil does like Kurt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What well, they got to do with me? I'm the head coach. I know. I got it. So he had a short stint with the Lakers way back when. Yeah. And they went 24 and 13, and they did make the playoffs, but that was pretty easy at right. that point. And the short stint with the Knicks, 9 and 19, but you don't think he's age 61 that he'd say, I got one one big run here in me? LeBron, I tell you what, the moment they name him head coach, that's yep. the day LeBron James going to make that call to Genie Bus. <sighs> I'm up out of here. You're going you to send me somewhere, but I'm not playing for you. Hmm. Not for him. You know what? I, I dare your man LeBron James to demand a trade. He deserves to demand a trade. Yep. He deserves much better than this. Yep. I'm going to doubt that he will because I do think he likes living in Brentwood and working near Hollywood where in the offseason he can be close mm -hmm. to his projects. But if he really cares about maximizing his chance for one last or two last hurrahs and winning rings, he's got to get out from under this because they're yeah. going nowhere slowly. Yeah, because this right here, he's working on Space Jam 3. Yeah. <laughs> no, back with this, with them, what they doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he working on Space Jam three already. Okay. Yeah. They're they're already they got a script. Yeah, he got it. He working on it right now. What if two fails at the box office? It ain't no, gonna fail. Don't, gonna don't do this. See, there you go. 
There it's you go. You already done that. You, you don't do that. Huh? I see what you're trying to do. It's not going to fail. Well, you, you got an unclutch guy as at the, at the helm here. No, it's, it's not going to fail. He's the star. But here's the thing, Skip. You, you make it seem like in Space Jam 1, it was littered with all-time great players. Muggsy Bowles, Larry Johnson, Sean Bradley. Come on, Skip. We can get some guys. They were basically extras. Hmm. The only guy with the... They were little cameos. Yeah. 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 So we get a couple of them. Okay. I mean, but we try to get you. We try, you know, we try to get Giannis a little prop. Yep. Try to give him a little love. Yeah. But he don't want love. We try to get him. Okay, move on. It's a little busy right now. Hey, Lonzo and Kuz will participate. They're happy to do it. They'll nah. be there for him. No, nah, we. That's about all you're gonna nah. get at this point. If we do an '80s Jerry Curl reunion, we go hire them. Right yeah. now, we're doing Space Jam. Mm, okay. <sighs> you, you know what? LeBron can still do Hollywood if he's playing some. I don't know where. Skip, this is ridiculous. Yeah. The Lakers. How, how have the Lakers managed to bungle this? The one guy that can can get LeBron's attention because he knows how to talk to LeBron. He knows to tell LeBron, okay, you need to step on it. LeBron, you need you need... Magic. No, no, no. Oh. No, T. Lou. Oh, as T. Lou. Oh, coach. I thought you meant Magic. No, no, okay, yeah, T. Lou yeah. as a coach. Yeah. Because okay. it was reported that when yeah, he you took. You know what? He, he deserved Ty. Yeah. He, he just did. He's earned the right to have Ty Lou be his head coach. He would have been a good coach. fit. Yep. He would have been. Skip, he would have been a good fit with the kids, too. They would all. Yeah. He's, he's you you remember when he first got the job, it was reported that he was in the huddle talking, yep. and LeBron tried to chime in. Yeah. And he said, shut, shut the bleep up. up. Huh. I got there. No, he did. He stood up to yeah. him. three big Yes, he knows how to. Did you see the report that Ty celebrated his birthday in Vegas and he had a Lakers cake? He wanted this job. <laughs> I bet like, a good point. It wouldn't have been hard. And, and it was skip. right there in front of him. And we can't him. forget, Ty Lu played for the Lakers too. He did, a long time ago, but he was and on two championships. Championship team. Teams. Yeah. But then I'm thinking about, you know, all of the drama that's going on with Jeannie. Are they master? Is this a master plan? Oh, let's string him along. Mm -hmm. Let's just, it, the public won't notice. LeBron mm -hmm. won't notice. Do, you, do they think we're not going to figure out what's going on? Mm -hmm. The three years isn't insulting? Well, I think we just figured it out. Yeah. And whenever, we I'll just skip, called them on it. And all the other coaches got five-year deals. Yeah. Luke Walton Everyone. just got fired and got a five-year deal. <laughs> and, and Monty Williams, the guy that you wanted, he just got a five. So you're going to give Monty a five-year deal. You give the guy that I'm replacing a five-year deal, but you want me to come in and take a three-year deal, and then you want to put people on my staff, hmm. knowing I'm going to say no, but you can look at it at LeBron. Hmm. We try. I think Linda's going to give Kurt a five-year deal. That, That's what I, I think, get a, right? Forever. Well, maybe at this right. point. No mercy. Steven Jones said the Cowboys are, quote, off and running in contract talks with Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. Both of their deals are up at the end of this season, while Ezekiel Elliott is under team control through 2020. Yesterday, Jones talked about paying all of his stars and why they should take less money to stay in Dallas. Take a listen. It's not their job to manage the cap, I understand that, but it is my job and Jerry's job to, so that they will understand why we're negotiating hard uh, to make the very best deal we can because the money's, if we, if we, you know, if we can talk them into not maxing out, doing well but not, you know, not maxed, then that allows us to have other good football players around them, and we all know what happens. You just, you know, you look at the TV booths and you look at what these players do off the field. Uh, if we can put Super Bowl rings on these guys, then, you know, there'll be legends around this area for, for many, many, many years to come. And what they may give up a little bit in their contract, they should be able to invest, uh, you know, in being a cowboy and making our teams better. Oh, interesting. I feel like that. I've heard that you before that? That from this guy. That's a bull, Skip. You know it. I don't know about the clapping. Uh, Shannon, is there any truth to what Stephen has no. to say there? No, no, Skip, baby. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for that. Clapping Skip, I have no problems with hard negotiations. Hmm. But hard negotiations should take place behind closed doors, not public. What he's trying to do again, let me reiterate, he's trying to tell to his fan base, yep. if Dak Prescott does not give us a discount, if Amari Cooper does not want to give us a discount, they care more about their, uh, uh, their, their, their bottom line than they care about Super Bowls and winning. You said it. That's you and Steve. That's you and Jerry's job mm -hmm. are to worry about the cap. Mm -hmm. Skip, this is these guys' first contract. I can see if it's year 12, if it's mm -hmm. year 14, and, you, and they want to take a little haircut. But not the first one. Skip, Dak was a fourth-round pick. Hmm. Dak didn't get the 30, the 30, what, the 30 million dollars that Jerry Goff got, the 29 million dollars that Walker to him got. This is his first big deal, and you want him to take a haircut. Hmm.
Come on, man. Come mm. on, Steven. Don't do that. Don't make it public. Don't make it seem because the fans are always going to side with the team. They see these guys out. They see these guys out in public. Come on, man. Take less money good. so we can keep all these good players. No, love come on. it. Yeah. Because Skip Bayless, Skip, Skip Bayless is all he's quick to say. Yeah, over he's there. like, man, the salary cap goes up every year. But guess what goes up every year too? Also, mm. Jenny, revenue. Uh -huh. mm. So let me get this right. So on March 26th, maybe I'm off a week or two. Each NFL team got a check for 250 million. The salary cap is 188. Mm -hmm. Now notice I said that's what the NFL cut them. They hadn't sold a ticket yet. They haven't sold concession, and they hadn't do it, done local mm -hmm. advertising. Mm -hmm. But you want me to get your haircut? I can't mm -hmm. do it, Skip Bayless. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And first of all, and I get it. Maybe these guys in the booth, Tony Romo ain't got no ring, but I can assure you, maybe he got the job because he was a Cowboys quarterback, but he kept the job because he's damn good. Maybe Troy Aikman got an opportunity to be at the lead at Fox, but he kept the job because he's damn good. True. So all these guys, Amari Cooper is not going to be the lead. Mm. And, and I, I get where they can invest. No, 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 no. I don't need to invest. And uh, I, everybody, to with Tom Brady. Tom Brady's wife is worth four hundred million. Mm -hmm. They probably said my wife spends four million. Mm -hmm. I need all my money. <laughs> she ain't bringing in four hundred million. She's taking out four million. Mm -hmm. No, Skip, I can't do They're it. They're not saying that. that. No, yes, they are. You know what they say? It does what you say. You over here clapping because Stephen Jones want these guys to take a haircut on their first contract, Skip. On Can the you first contract, Skip. Ugh. On the first contract, I get it, Skip. If it was the third contract, mm. if it was the, you know, I get that. Mm. But not the first time I get an opportunity to make big money. Mm. I can't give you. I feel like sorry. Mm. You know what? You know what? If I'm a Mark Cooper, Jerry, mm. I want 17 million. Y'all don't want to pay it. Let's just let me go ahead and play this mm. out, and mm. I keep it moving. I move mm. on down the road. Okay. So before I answer Jenny's question. I'm going to step back and laugh at this whole situation because I find it all highly amusing. In fact, I find it deliciously ironic that the head of the Cowboy Haters Association sitting across from me and all the other Cowboy Haters out there in the media are all pounding their desks and saying, Jerry's got a problem. We love it that Jerry has a problem, but they're missing the boat and the point that Jerry Jones has the greatest problem in the National Football League. Jerry's the only one who has too many stars. I love this. For me, you're, you're, you keep telling me every day, you have too many guys to pay. And I keep telling you, he'll figure it out. His son will figure it out. They're smart guys. They're really good businessmen, as they yeah. say. <laughs> That's what they do best. I don't know about the football decisions sometimes, but the business decisions, they always figure it out. And the truth was, I loved every word he said because it rings of truth from top to bottom. And he said, we didn't see this before we saw that part of the quote, but he said, I would love to max all these guys out because they've all earned it. Okay, then, well, okay. baby, what I earned. Okay, but you, there, there, there is still a cap, even though it goes okay, up. Okay, let somebody else you, max you them out. You can't max every guy under the cap or it won't fit. Let somebody then, else Then you're going to wind up with with free agents playing safety or okay. whatever, okay? That's not my problem, Skip. Okay, Remember. well, you want it to be my problem, okay? <laughs> That's the problem here Man, in you this discussion. Here. Skip, you know I love you. Here's the thing. This is why I look at it like this. You know, Fox going to come to me and say, Shannon, we got this really great lady, Linda in HR. We're really close. We're about five to 10000 off. We was wondering if you, I said, you better go to Harold and Maintenance because Shannon ain't giving you jack. Mm. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah, no, no, don't do that. This is my first contract. Skip that. Skip yeah. that, Wait. Prescott. Wait, you're negotiating with HR? No, I'm, What's no, going no, on? no. Weird. I'm saying. You're better no, than that. No, no. I'm, say, no, I'm saying they come to me and say, we got this great lady in HR, mm -hmm. Linda, but we're like five to 10000 off, Shannon. Can you give us a little? Oh, so you can pay Linda? Yeah, so you oh. can pay Linda in HR. Linda. I'm going to say, take your butt to Harold and, and maintenance. Oh. And let him give you five to 10. Because yeah. I. I well, he shouldn't give the money up either. Whoa! So he, so nobody should give up money. Oh, thank you, Jenny. That's all I needed. Thank Shannon, you. I don't think anyone should. There's no salary cap at Fox. <laughs> it ain't. Any other hold on, hold on. It, it ain't? No. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Damn. Shoot, no, I gotta you don't have that. to operate. They have their own self-imposed salary Skip. cap. But, but there's no league cap Skip. that affects Fox. Skip, you know Dak. Skip, Dak has only made, with this mm -hmm. year, he'll make about $2.5 mm -hmm. over the four years. Skip, this he has a, he's a fourth round draft pick. Now, when did you thought when did you think Dak was gonna be the guy? Was it his rookie? Because you told me he had the greatest rookie season for a quarterback in NFL history. He did. Okay, so you oh so was it then? Okay, what about after year two? Did you think he was your guy? Yeah. What I did. about after year three? 
Loved him. I mean, here we come. So wait, 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 Super so, Bowls, here we come. So I need to go ahead and give me my money. Yep. I need $30 yep. million, I need $85 million at the time I signed the contract. Okay. So Stephen gave you nothing but logic yesterday because he even put it in the perspective of Zeke. He says, Zeke, he's not at the front front of the list because he's got this year and he's got another year at his tender. So obviously he's just being honest about this. So yeah, Zeke goes down the priority list, yeah, right? Yeah. And yet he's made it clear from the start they are working right now as we speak on a deal for Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. And once that one falls into place, whatever it is, 30 million a year, whatever it is is fine with me. Then you have to start calculating, recalculating, okay, what's left for Amari Cooper? Now I got to take exception to something you said about Amari Cooper. Who's to say he couldn't become a TV star in the booth because I covered Daryl Johnston, and I covered Darren Woodson, and th they weren't scintillating personalities in the locker room. They'd become very good on TV. Darren's a very close friend of mine, but when I covered him, he was quiet. He was to himself. He was not a spokesman for that team. I think he belongs in the Hall of Fame. He is in the Ring of Honor, but the point is, he's really good on television. Who knew? I've had Amari Cooper on shows on ESPN. He's delightful. He he is. Trust me. He's got big spark, big big personality. No. Yes. No. He he could have a I, future in TV, but you need to put a ring on his. No, you finger. don't. No, there are a lot of guys in TV don't have rings on it. Uh, somebody my, across me has three. What would that? No, no, no. But here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did that not help? That might have gave yeah. me credibility. But if, okay. what if I'd have been a boom? No, you you would have failed. <laughs> exactly. You would have failed. Exactly. But you got the door open yes. slightly wider yes. because no, no okay. question. Okay. No question. All right. So. He's making the point that I've been making to you from the start. It is a big deal to play for America's team. It's a much bigger deal when you win Super Bowls because that, that 90s dynasty, all those guys, they're legendary in yes. Dallas, Texas. Yes. And no matter what happens to them in or out of television, they can always fall back on doing card shows in Dallas, making appearances, mm -hmm. speaking in Dallas. Everybody wants to touch a cowboy in Dallas, well, you especially me, when they're hot. If I'm Dak Prescott, you let me make $150, $200 million. I won't have to do no car signing. I won't have to do no appearances. What did we count last year? It was actually off Stop the, off, the whoa, 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 wait. Off, off the bad year that you yeah. said he had, the middle year. Stop. I think during that year Stop. he wound up with 13 national 13. commercials. Stop. 13 Stop national that man TV? Pocket. But he shouldn't Woo! have to do 13 Woo! national commercials. No. If he's yeah, because he got to do 13 because he's making 500000 I mean. instead of $25 million. It's called a rookie fourth-round okay. contract. Okay, and guess what? It, it calls me, it's called being a free agent, mm. and I can get my money. Okay. I want my money. Okay. I want my money, Skip. You want my Cowboys to fail and fall. That's no, what no, you no. want. Hey. You, you want dissension and destruction in the locker room. You want holdouts. You want controversy. Mm -mm. You want ill will in no. my locker room. That's all. And, and again, this is where Jerry, he, he spoke glowingly about Zeke yesterday, and it was from his heart. And he said, oh, Zeke's got the biggest heart. Zeke's doing a lot of charity work. Yeah. He, he's, every day I pick up, the, you know, I, I open up, and he, there he is again. He's doing more charity, right? Skip, you like Family Guy, right? You know Brian and Stewie. Love family. Brian and Stewie. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian borrowed some money from Stewie. <laughs> and Stewie said, okay, I need you to have my money back. I need mm -hmm. you to have my money tomorrow. And Brian was like, okay, I'll get to you. Tomorrow comes and he ain't have Stewie's money. No, but Stewie always takes him for a ride. And what, <laughs> it's, not like what, it's, it's too much interest. And what did Stewie do? Yeah. Stewie beat the brakes off Brian. No, I he got my, somebody else to beat. That him. he beat him at one time because Brian tried to sneak past him with a mustache on. Mm. Skip Baylor, <laughs> you said it. Dak is a, is a fourth round draft pick. Skip, mm -hmm. let the man, okay, just let the man get this first contract. Yep. And then the next contract, if he wants to give y'all a haircut, say, hey, take it down on the size a little bit for mm. Steven. But not right now. They got a lot of guys worthy of big That's contracts. not my problem. Lyle Collins, Jalen Smith, they're all coming due. Byron Jones, yes. they're all coming due, and they'll, they'll get their piece of the pie, mm -mm. but it can't be the biggest piece of the pie. Yeah, you can't been, give max been, contracts to them. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, come back, come back. I am the CEO of Shannon. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott is the CEO of Shannon. His job is to maximize his ability. He can't worry about Amari Cooper, mm -hmm. who was a first-round draft pick. He can't worry about Brian Jones, okay. who was a first-round draft pick. Dak has nothing to worry about. Yeah. He is going to get the biggest piece of the I don't know. Okay, well, I want my big, I want my fair chair. I might not, if I'm Amari Cooper, I might not get a bigger piece of chicken mm. than what, uh, uh, that. But I want, yeah. if I don't get the breast, I want the drumstick, I want the short thigh, yeah. I want a wing. 
Next, you're going to tell me Jeff Heath deserves a max. No, that, yeah, that's he, what you're going to tell he, me. He, that's where we're heading. No, no. Really? Jeff Heath is going to be the starter and should be compensated mm. appropriately. Mm. I don't we'll want to negotiate anything with you. You, Skip, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Skip. Mm. That you want that you want these guys. You know what? You hear that, Fox? You hear old Skip? Oh, Skip, go take a haircut for old Shay. Ah, I love it. Oh, that's is what that I'm, what it is? Okay. <laughs> Yo, come here, look. Why are you? Stop it. Oh, I don't know what you know I'm, what you're I'm saying. Gonna take a haircut for old Shay. I'm going to take a haircut for old Shay. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a roller coaster season for the Celtics is over. Yikes. But is it all Kyrie's Yikes. fault? We'll oh, discuss the that. The loss? Next. The guy that's saying LeBron's leg. No mercy. So, the Bucks. Well, they eliminated the Celtics last night behind a strong performance from the Greek freak and will move on to their first conference final since 2001. Boston, you know, they had high expectations this year, but a lot of the blame is falling on Kyrie Irving's shoulders. He had a very disappointing game five, going just six for 21 from the field and finishing with just one assist. Take a listen to Kyrie after the game. There's no time to be disappointed. I, I think that... Um... You know, you take your lessons, you, you take your ass whooping that they handed us, um, and you move on. You know, plenty of people here are speculating about your future, and certainly this summer. Did uncertainty o over that weigh on you in, in any way in this no. series? No. All right, Skip, how much blame yep. does yep. Kyrie deserve? <laughs> Honestly. Brad Stevens tried to take the fall last night for his team, mm -hmm. but Kyrie Irving deserves 100, make it 1,000 wow. percent wow. of the blame. As you know, I've long been a Kyrie fan, and he did hit the shot of shots in a game seven at Oracle that did save LeBron, but that's just me, and that's, that's a long time ago now <laughs> because I cannot tell a lie. Kyrie Irving was at the heartless heart of the biggest collapse to me in Boston Celtics playoff history. He was at the center, given the expectations this year, of the worst year I think the Boston Celtics have, have ever had, given what they were coming off of, because I'm going to remind everybody, as they know, they beat this team, Milwaukee, last year in seven games Correct. in the first yeah. round. They took LeBron's team to game seven of the conference finals with no Kyrie and no Gordon Hayward. Mm -hmm. They come back allegedly healthy, and that happened. And it was all about Kyrie. And this team indicted itself and indicted Kyrie in game one because mm -hmm. they won game one at Milwaukee this year by 22 points. Mm -hmm. That was Kyrie's happy night. Happy. Kyrie that night went 12 of 21 from the floor for 26 points and had a playoff career tying 11 assists that night. Yep. That's pretty good, right? That's very good. Happy, happy. Everybody's happy sharing the basketball. Yep. Last four games. They lost by an average of 16 points as Kyrie averaged five assists. And last night, if you look at your score sheet there, your box score, he had one big assist. Mm -hmm. One assist one in, assist. in that game, in a closeout game. So, over the last four games, Kyrie Irving shot 30% from the floor. That is hard to do. That's 25 of 83. From three over the last four games, he shot five of 27. That's 19%. So, here's a stat for you. He was the first Celtic in 53 years to take at least 15 shots and shoot under 40% in four straight playoff games. That's, that's historic, and right? And there have been a lot of playoff games, been, and there have been a lot, a lot of players. Lot. Okay, so what happened? He rejoined this team with Gordon Hayward, and he immediately made it this year him versus them, right? They were them, mm -hmm. and them turned on him because they deserve to, because he was throwing all of them under every team bus that they took. And after a while, it just looked like a troubled basketball team, and I still don't know how it fooled me by winning game one. I, I don't know how it won game one at, at Milwaukee, but it showed you what it, could, what it could have been. Yes. But Kyrie failed as a leader and, and a scorer, because the worse it got on the floor, the, the, the worse the shot that he took. Last night, he took nothing but bad shots he took all some, night. some horrible shots. horrible shots. They were done. Because he was trying harder and harder to will it in and save this team and show he could just go solo. Well, Skip, you remember the other night, he was 7-22, to 22 and he said he should have took 30 yeah, shots. Because yeah. he's I, such a great shooter. That's I thought he, he was, was going to take 30 in the first half. I'm starting to have a hard time remembering him as a great shooter. That's how bad <laughs> it got over the last... I know we're being prisoners of the moment. 
but clearly this was a miserable fail, an epic fail on the part of Kyrie Irving. Yes. So he is now officially done with the Boston Celtics. Yeah. He's done, and they're done with him also. Yeah. So onward and upward or downward because he needs to go to another co-star mm-hmm. who can be his leader on and off the floor. Mm-hmm. That's what he needs. Kid, when the lady asked, was it the uncertainty that had something to do with it, there was no uncertainty with Kyrie. Kyrie knew exactly what he wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. He don't want to be there. That's true. Skip, I agree with everything you just said. For the simple fact, Kyrie is a superstar. He gets the lion's share of the blame. That's why they don't say, well, the Cavaliers were one and three in the NBA Finals. They say LeBron James That's true. was one and three okay. in the NBA p- uh, Finals in the last four years. So this is what Kyrie signed up for. That's not what he skipped. Yeah, okay. He wanted that. Yeah. He was a very, very bad leader this season. Now, I don't know what he's going to be moving forward, but this year, chalk this one up, Kyrie. Mm-hmm. You, you gagged this one off. You were terrible. Uh, he wanted the responsibility because what did he say, Skip? I want to be the. I want to lead my own team. I want to be the number one guy. Mm-hmm. But what he found out, it was a lot more difficult than he anticipated. It was. It's just not about being the best player. Yep. There's a lot of things you have. There's a lot of concessions that you have to make. You have to know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and where to say it. Yep. He had no idea. He just took for granted, man, I'm good. I'm, 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 maybe he thought he was just as good as LeBron. Well, if I'm just as good as LeBron, I need my own team like he got his team. Yep. So I needed someone to build a team around me like they built a team around LeBron. Because remember, he said he knew LeBron was going to leave, and then he was going to be strapped with a bunch of team, a bunch of players that's not equipped to do what he could do. Yep. Skip. On paper, this team probably should be in the NBA Finals. But you remember a couple of years ago, Skip, I think they were in Utah, and Kyrie had 30-something points and zero assists, mm-hmm. and LeBron said, this cannot happen. Kyrie took 16 shots in the first half with zero assists. Mm-hmm. You mentioned of the shots that he took, 21 last night with one assist. He went Westbrook, but at least when Westbrook plays, Westbrook going to give you double-digit assists. He, he will. He might take some bad shots. He might be 17 or 43. And he might get you 12 rebounds. Kyrie but he going to do that. But he going to give you 12 assists also. Mm. Skip, this is, this, is, uh, this is embarrassing for Kyrie. This, this, you wanted this, this bro. This is shameful. You wanted, this is what you wanted. You asked wanted for it. this. Yep. You, you said you wanted this, and you got what you wanted. You wanted to be out a Pastore franchise, the Celtics, a great, you know, uh, 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 a team that moved the ball and coaches that can coach me at all my, my, my abilities. Yep. You got everything you asked for. And then guess what happened? You goofed it off. Yep. So now you're going to go right. somewhere. So, but Skip, even if he goes with KD, mm. he's not going to be bigger than KD. No. Nope. It's going to be thought of as KD team. I, I think he might like it this time. I think he might like being the second fiddle. Oh, right. you like that. Yeah. So you like when somebody else catch that criticism, yeah. huh? Well, yeah. he's got to know that this one was him. Oh, yeah, he got to eat this That's one. why some okay. of those words and, were yep. like that. And even though I'm not giving any blame to one Gordon Hayward, and even though he's, 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 a, good, he's a good young man yeah. and he suffered a, a terrible injury, yes. just terrible, career-threatening, he is simply the most overpaid, overhyped player in this league. He makes $30 million, and he is now a shell of himself. And I'm not even sure what his, his self was. I told you he was way over-recruited Skip, and overhyped. They, they, that's, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Skip, they recruited him. They went after him. Others did, too. Yeah, Miami wanted him. But Pat that's, that's my point. I Skip, I, I never thought, you know, and I guess, you know, he did go to, the, he did go to an all-star. In the one, Western Conference. One. And you know, hold on, Skip, but you know, the West yeah. is loaded. Yeah. If you can make the all star team in the Western Conference, you know, with the KDs and the Paul Georges were out there. And at the time, Kawhi, got, Kawhi was out there. You're like, whoo, man, he got to be good. I don't see it. And he was the go-to scorer on the Utah team that doesn't score very much. And he was in his comfort zone in Salt Lake City. You take him out of that and put him here with some stayed. expectations, the, the, he should have stayed. He, he that's, stayed. That's the, see, that wow. expectation. Wow. So now you come to a situation in team, and they're like, we got Gordon Hayward. Right. We expect to be this. Nobody yeah. thought Utah was going to the Western Conference Finals or going to the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. So he didn't have those kind of expectations. Yeah. Now Kyrie comes in. He comes in with this young nucleus. Because yeah. remember the year before, they had just given Al Horford mm-hmm. a max deal. Yep. It's like, woo, we loaded. Now, now Horford's a free agent also. He True. could be gone. And we have talked over the last couple of weeks about whatever happened to Jason Tatum. Oh! 
<laughs> it, but, but it's possible. I'm going to give him this break. He might have just gotten kyrie where Kyrie just kept going solo until he was completely out of the flow of the but offense. But what about all these assets they're going to be willing to ship to the Pelicans for mm -hmm. Anthony Davis? What about all these assets? Do you still feel the same way about Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Rozier? Now, the draft pick's not going to be that good. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, because what, who want that Who want that trash from the Lakers? Mm. Really? So you you really to say Jason Tatum is that is, is better than I Kyle Kuzma? Yeah. Really? Boy, he sure didn't show it. I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> if he is, I can't tell. Hmm. Is Jalen is Jalen Brown really better than Ingram? When Ingram was, I, I saw more flashes from him this year than I saw from Jason Tatum. Yeah, he, yeah. he was hmm. not bad last night actually. Jalen Look, Brown. Boston fans often have it easy with hmm. Patriots, the Sox, the Bruins are still That's going, true. but this was a disaster. Oh, this was a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. This is one that they're going to want to move on Ugly. from. Uh, how about those Warriors? They Ooh. got the win without KD last night. We're going to discuss everything that happened there with Chris Broussard. No mercy. Well, the Warriors did survive at home last night to win game five. But late in the third quarter, Kevin Durant left the game with a calf strain, and he'll have an MRI today. So Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green all stepped up in Katie's absence. Curry scored 16 of his 25 points after Durant left the game. Golden State now leads the series 3-2. Game six tomorrow in Houston. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Chris Broussard. Chris. Good morning. Uh, should Houston uh, have won that one? No. No. I, I feel like I'm the only person on the planet who understands that Kevin Durant was a luxury, mm -hmm. not a necessity. Hmm. They, they won the championship without him. I get it. Cleveland was hurt. They won 73 games without him. Beat a I darn near say great Oklahoma City team. Three, beat them, came back from a 3-1 deficit. And with all due respect from Cle for Cleveland, most people think they would have won that championship if Draymond doesn't get suspended. True. So this is a great team. The last three years without Kevin Durant, let me say with Kevin Durant and no, no Steph Curry, the Warriors are 28 and 18, 61%. With Steph Curry and no Kevin Durant, they are 29 and 4, 88%. Their offensive rating, their defensive rating, their net rating, their field goal percentage, their opponent's field goal percentage, their three point percentage, their opponent's three point percentage are all better when Steph plays and KD doesn't. Hmm. So I, I'm not, KD is great, and this is what happened. He's a luxury, but everybody on the team sees, including Steph and Clay. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's, he's better than all of us. Mm -hmm. And over time, you naturally defer. It happened in Miami. When, when they teamed up the big three in Miami, I think D-Wade thought, man, I'm just as good as he LeBron. Did. Right? Mm -hmm. But and you well, begin to publicly, see. Publicly, he, he was very open about, I I'm Robin. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, when they first got together? I thought he was pretty open about it. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I don't know that maybe, he believed Right. It. I think inside, yeah. right. he felt, if I'm not as good, I'm close. Right. But over time, you see practices. You I see, get, you realize, okay, that's true. This dude's the man, mm -hmm. and you defer. So that's what Golden State's done. KD is their best player, mm -hmm. but they defer to him naturally. But that doesn't, and in deferring, they lost a little of what made them so special. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, with Kevin Durant there, they've been great, obviously, two championships. But it's been a heck of a struggle at times. They could have lost last year in the conference finals. Cleveland just wasn't that good once they lost Kyrie. Right. They just had LeBron and Kevin Love. And, you know, so I, I look, I, I think they still win this series, probably in seven. But I'm going to give Houston the respect to think they're going to win game six and Golden State wins it in seven. So beyond what Golden State, Houston, and I know you're going to get to this, Chris Paul, is not the same. I don't know if it's he's old yeah. or that well, he just, just doesn't older. get it done. Yeah. yeah, older or just yeah. we've seen him struggle on in the playoffs, crunch mm -hmm. moments. We have. He's been 13.6 assists on 33% shooting the last three games. And Harden, this is, look, the last seven minutes when he came back in the game, they got good shots. Eric Gordon hit some big shots. Harden yeah. made a nice couple nice passes. Yeah. They were getting decent stuff, but what stood out to me is they were playing differently. Harden wasn't on the ball for the most part. That's Chris what, Paul had, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't like he wasn't just shooting. It was that, wait a minute. He didn't need out of ball. This is, you, you're playing completely differently than you play all season, yep. all series, 
all game up to this point. That's what makes me wonder what's going to happen with Harden and CP3 in the crunch moment. Okay, before this man speaks, gut feeling on KD's injury. What, what do you think? What, what is it? How bad is it? Yeah. Somebody close to the situation last night, now I'm not saying this is right, but they were texting me after the calf strain came out, the news, that a person with the Warriors said they would be, that was in there, said they'd be shocked if it's not a torn Achilles. Oof. We saw what it looked like. Yes. But Steve Kerr came out strong. This is after I was getting these texts and saying this press, you know, it's a calf. So he was hopefully just it what is. He was told that it was a calf right. strain, but he also uh. seemed pretty deflated about it. That's just me. His yeah. body language. Because he's was probably down. out for the rest of this series, regardless okay. of what it is. All right. But obviously, if it's an Achilles, now it throws everything in flux, whereas versus a calf strain. So I hope it's a calf, but gosh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. You go ahead. Take not. it from here. Here's the issue I have with everything you just said about how Kevin Durant was a luxury. This year, after he won back-to-back -back finals MVPs, the luxury was operating like the necessity. He was. The, the icing had become the cake this year right. because he had established himself to me, don't want to fight about this right now, but as the best player on the planet. And I believe they had all decided he is the best player on the planet because he took over two game threes in LeBron's house, back-to-back -back finals. And all of a sudden, through these playoffs, if not through the whole year, the offense started to look a little clunky to me. The ball, the beautiful ball movement that Kevin went there for, sharing the ball, it became Kevin or bust. And it started to impact the psyches of the two greatest shooters in tandem I've, we've ever seen. Right. Steph and Clay, mm -hmm. to where they began to look over their shoulder figuratively, you know, like, is the seven foot monster clapping for the ball <laughs> now or not? Can, can, can I just go have, right. can I go shoot this freely? And to me, I do not believe Golden State would have won that game last night unless Kevin had gotten hurt. I'm not wishing that on anybody. I'm knocking on wood for his Achilles not being torn, but. I think it was heading for disaster just the way the Clippers game two went to disaster when they blew the 31-point lead, just the way they had lost six times at home this year by 20-plus and twice by 30-plus points because they suffer from their prisoners and victims of are we there yet syndrome. After you do it so much, you say, is that enough? Agreed. And at halftime, it looked to me like, and I wrote them off, uh, Houston off at halftime, because they, it looked like Golden State had reasserted itself in the second quarter and said, we are the defending champs. Watch this in our house. Right. It was 14 down at halftime, and I told this man to start the show, I am sitting on my bed because I'm about to get under the covers because <laughs> it's, it's over. It is 14, and I thought, well, I'll just watch the first couple of minutes just to see if they quickly extend it to 20 because yeah. I thought they would. Right. Nope. Then. Foot off the accelerator, and here came the Rockets on a 22-9 to nine run all the way up to that moment when Kevin made his first field goal of the third quarter, and it was – it was one of those where give me the ball and get out of my way. I'm driving it to the baseline. I'm going straight up over Tuck, and I'm going to rip this. And he did, and he snarled when he ripped yep. it. Like, ah. yep. Okay, <laughs> here, we, here we go. And that put them back up three. three. And he took one step and pushed off, and he was like, huh? Right. Somebody, Somebody kicked me? Exactly. Yep. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. All of a sudden, karma came full circle, and just the way CP3 was lost in Game 5 last year and they collapsed in Game 6 and 7, I thought, the basketball gods just said, here, Houston, we will pay back Golden State. And what happened from that point on? Steph Curry happened. And he said, remember me, just the way Kevin said the other day, I'm Kevin Durant. Steph said, I'm Steph Curry. Do you remember that we won a record 73 games one year and I was back-to-back -back MVPs in this league? And he took over the game from that point forward. James actually had a nice flourish at the end of the third quarter in which he scored five quick points, but Steph matched him basket for basket to right. end the quarter. So it's tied at the end of the quarter. And fourth quarter, Steph just took over. And to, to this man's point, he was all over James Harden to start the show, as he should have been. But it was different than James Harden. James usually goes up in flames shooting threes that brick. 
And, and what, what happened, instead of him going 0 for 8 from the three-point line in the fourth quarter, he just said, no, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to disappear. I'm going to stay over here. Now, they were doubling him hard right. every time he touched the ball. But he needed a partner. He needed somebody else to step up and save him. And Chris is, is aging to the point where he can't do that anymore. There was a time, and especially back to his New Orleans days, he would have taken over that game. Yeah. But he, he was not capable last night. And, and this is a different style. You Watching him, this isn't Chris Paul's game. Like the way they play, right? You know, off he's a two guard essentially, and and that he he did it well last year. He's done it well at points, but this is you're not gonna get the Chris. Plus, you see him at times he'll get it. They make quick decisions. Mm -hmm. A lot of times he'll get it, and he wants to dribble because that's yeah. what he's used to doing his whole career. Yeah, I am surprised that the uh, uh, the Houston didn't win this game for the simple fact is that I thought James Harden would say, like, you know what, this is my time. Well, it considering, was his time. Considering what happened in game, you remember, uh, what was that, game six against San Antonio. Mm -hmm. What happened in the closeout <laughs> game cool. against uh, 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 Golden <laughs> State a couple years ago. Right. We've seen him All down time. the stretch in these meaningful games. By the way, he five, set six. the, the all-time playoff record for turnovers. turnovers. And dribbled the last one off his foot with a chance to what win the game. 12? 12 or 14? 12. 12. One of them, 12. Yeah. 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 Might have been 14. 12 or 14. Yeah, he had a bunch of them. <laughs> but CP3, 3 or 14. Clint Capella. Three or ten. Now you remember Clint Capella after they beat Utah, he's sitting up on the podium. I won't go to state. Uh, he likes yeah. to talk. I won't go. To, I won't go to He'll state because of how it ended for us last year, bro. You were good and terrible all last night. Mm -hmm. And see, this is why I don't like plus minus because he had the highest plus on anybody on the Rockets when he was out there being terrible. <laughs> to Chris's point, when he says KD was a luxury, not a necessity, KD is chinchilla seat covers in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Do you really need that? Because the roll Ross already went right, right. It's a roll. <laughs> but they you did. told me Draymond went into the parking lot crying. Yeah, he did. I'm saving. And then he had KD crying when he called himself on the bench. But that's neither here nor there. Was that asking. guilt it's on different. Draymond's part? Maybe. Yeah, right? You Maybe. know what? The thing is, Skip, what KD, look, they're a very good team, Chris. You made, you, you're right. 73 and 9. But what KD did, he makes them unbeatable in a seven game series. I agree. Because. We know, I, I don't believe if, I don't believe they're the two-time defending champ if KD is not in Golden State. Mm -hmm. I believe Cleveland beats them. Mm. I believe Cleveland beats them. And they knew that. That's why Draymond got on the horn. Mm. But James Harden, you, uh, he needs a 40-point effort. James Harden's got to win game six. This is his legacy because his legacy right now in meaningful playoff games, game five, game six, is not very good. Mm -mm. He has to erase. It's never going to go away, but it'll help push it down. You know, if you do enough good things, it'll push the bad down a little mm -hmm. further. Because right now, when you click, hey, all I see is, oh, game six against the, uh, the Spurs? You did that? With yeah. I Kawhi? You how lost about, by 40? How about game six and seven? Again, no CP3 last year against Golden State, but you got six in your house, Then you right? Mm -hmm. yep. And yep. he goes a combined six for 25 from three in those two games. Well, last night he did the reverse. He just wouldn't shoot it. I'm not going to do that anymore. So he and Chris Paul score eight total points in the fourth quarter. That's not enough. While Steph and Clay turn back into free shooting Steph and Clay, yeah. and they combined for 19. So they outscored the other backcourt 19 to 8. And by the way, Houston had four fourth quarter turnovers. They weren't, the, uh, James only had one, but they had four. Golden State had no turnovers yeah. in the fourth quarter. You don't think that's big in a close game? Absolutely. And I think that another thing is, uh, Chris, not to cut you off, but Steph's like, how aggressive can I be? Because I don't want to chase him off. Because the last time he played with a guy that was super aggressive, he ended up with us. So if I be me, Steph had to concede some of himself in order for KD to come. Right. But by the way, he conceded way more than Dwayne conceded even to LeBron. Yeah, yes. he did it I mean, right he just away. Said, Here. He yeah. did remember yeah. the first year was like, Steph's not the same. You yeah. know, you and then when KD got hurt at the end of the season, Steph went off. Yeah. And then KD came back in, in the playoffs. The one thing that concerns me about the Warriors is that can they – look, they got used to playing with KD. As you said, the, it, it didn't look the same mm -mm. because they were deferring. I don't know if it was better or not, but it was different. Right. And they also got used to playing with DeMarcus. So they it's did. a hard adjustment mm -hmm. to all of a sudden go back to playing 
how they played, what, three years yeah. ago. It was. Without, they still got like, four guys, though. Four guys from that way they played right. before. So it's easy. Because Looney, they don't even worry about Looney. We ain't got to give him no, we don't got to give him the ball. He just But he'll do what right. he does. Right. He'll do what he does. Right. And here's, everybody talks about their lack of depth. Now, that, that first great Warriors team that won the championship in 15, 2015, Leandro Barbosa. Yeah. Festus Izzili. Vanderbilt University, go ahead. <laughs> no, not to this. Brandon Rush, well, Livingston, and he's still there. And Harrison Barnes, who we know was oh. a starter. Oh, yeah. But those guys were playing big roles. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's who, who like, Patrick McCall, what, what's happened to him? Yeah. Like, there were guys that played good roles in Golden State, and then they go elsewhere, and you find out they're, they're not that good. So I'm just saying Jonas Jarepko, who hit a couple big shots last he night. He one big one early in the fourth. You mentioned Looney, Damian Jones, I think, yeah. supposed to get back. Like Vanderbilt University. <laughs> <laughs> they like the Vanderbilt guys. Yes, they do. But I, the oh. only question yeah. is their core is older. Mm -hmm. Not old, yep. older. And can they be, can Draymond and all these guys be what they were hmm. before KD got Can there? Draymond keep it together? He got a tech that was unnecessary. Hey, I know. He, and hey, he did on. throw that, right? Yeah, he, he did throw that leg okay. out there. You can pick up the charge on CP3. <laughs> he why, you gotta need, why you got to need a man on the way back? But well, this time he made amends immediately because he, he yes, made he a did. three. He had a big three. He that did. was that was a huge shot. Okay, we can give him that. And we are still waiting on those MRI results. Hopefully we'll hear something wow. today. Game six tomorrow in Houston, so not a big turnaround. Somehow the Lakers just keep being relevant because oh they keep doing weird things. They still don't have a coach. Weird. Yeah. So what does that mean for LeBron's future? We'll discuss that next. No mercy. All right, guys, let's get to the latest drama with the Lakers. Uh, we all thought LeBron's old coach, Ty Lue, would be the next head coach, but yesterday Lue decided to pass on the job. Reportedly, the Lakers only offered Lou a three-year, $18 million deal, but he demanded a five-year deal, and the team wanted Lou to hire Jason Kidd as one of his assistants. So now the Lakers are back to looking for a head coach. They're expected to interview Lionel Hollins, Frank Vogel, Mike Woodson. The drama continues. We are joined once again by Chris Broussard. Uh, Chris, mm. I mean, what does this mean for LeBron? What does this mean? You know things are bad when when my friend Skip Bayless <laughs> says you feel sorry for I LeBron. I do. Like, I genuinely yeah. feel sorry. You know it's, it's bad. Not a good <laughs> he does not deserve no. this. You've said no. it probably a week, two weeks straight. Thank you. I have. This is the greatest challenge of LeBron's career. Mm -hmm. Because in Cleveland, the first go-round, you had a solid front office. Danny Ferry knows what he's doing. Mike Brown was a coach. I know they had a few guys, but Mike Brown's a good coach. Miami, obviously, you had a great front office, good coach. Cavs the second time. David Griffin knew what he was doing. This, I, I mean, when you thought he couldn't get any worse, <laughs> this is horrible. They make the Knicks of yesteryear, yeah, yeah. like a few years ago, yeah. look like, you know, the, the Daryl Morey and the, yeah, and the Spurs, and <laughs> R.C. Buford and the Spurs. Here's the challenge for LeBron, or the, the, a problem. He wants to be in L.A., we know he came here for basketball is one of the reasons, but also family, where my boy's going to go to high school, yep. and obviously got great business interests. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, we all make decisions yeah. based on a yeah. lot of different and, things. And so, lifestyle. It's just right. it's a That's, great place. Yeah. Right. And so he doesn't want out. Right. So this is what I think LeBron has to do. You might get Jason Kidd, okay? Frank Vogel, who I think is a good coach, I – I don't think he would get LeBron's respect. I, I don't think they should bring him in, but hey, who knows what they're going to do. But you might get Jason Kidd. LeBron has said he's going to recruit. If I'm LeBron, we don't know what's going to happen with KD in the injury, but I'm, I'm bypassing KD, I'm bypassing Kawhi, because I don't think those are really realistic. No, I ain't I'm going full in, because <laughs> you know when you get recruited, you want to know I, you the one I want. You're not one of three. You're not my second choice. You're the one. Go all in on Kyrie. He should be going to visit Kyrie today. Yeah. You know, give him time. Give him space if that's what he wants. No, I think they're flying back, so you don't even worry about them. Don't fly back with them. Fly right. Back with right. Them like, go all – because Kyrie, as you said, is a number two. Now, it's not an insult. Kyrie is a stone-cold killer, closer, going to be a Hall of Famer most likely. Yep. But he's a number two, and that's fine. Okay, but and it, and I know it would be humbling for Kyrie. It would look humbling, but not. It, here's the other thing: LeBron hasn't won anything without Kyrie either. So I get it. We know LeBron's the better player. He did get to the finals without Kyrie, 
But you need him too. And if I'm LeBron, I'm selling it if he does get Kyrie. I think it's a long shot, but if he got him. And I'm LeBron, when I talk to the press, I'm like, look, we a great tandem. I need him. And we find, you know, sometimes you don't realize what you, like, like, don't sell it as, you know, I'm the man, he came back to me, or don't even ignore that. Address it and be like, I need Kyrie. Y'all say he needs me, I need him too. If I can't get Kyrie, I'm going after Kimba Walker. Hard. Now, I know I felt the same way. He's not Kyrie, and maybe he's not. But this is what we have to ask ourselves. If Kyrie had never teamed up with LeBron, where, what would we think of him? Hmm. He'd be a perennial all-star, but would he win? No. Would, we might look at him just like we look at Kimba yeah. Walker. Great individual talent. At least, yeah, at you least know. Kimba got to Charlotte to the playoffs a couple of times. Right. <laughs> Kyrie never did that. With, so I'm just saying, and then I'm looking at Marcus Morris. I'm looking at Bogdan Bogdanovich in Indiana, like shooters. And, Le, and here's the final point. LeBron James, and I know Le, LeBron's a victim of knowing too much. History, because he's a historian of the game, and his own personal experiences tell you you need other stars. You need other stars to win. Yeah. Okay? He's got to divorce himself from that mentality and next year say, whatever we have, if we don't make any improvements, I'm going to war with these guys and I am all in in your body language, your attitude, everything has to say that. Because guess what? The Portland Trailblazers, without a second star as good as C.J. McCollum is, or the Denver Nuggets, without a second star as much as Jamal Murray is emerging, yeah. are going, one of them is going to the Western Conference Finals. True. So you can't tell me a healthy LeBron James with whatever <laughs> don't have a chance? Mm. Especially if Golden State, if Durant leaves or is injured, whatever. Changes. He's going so, to have to reinvest emotionally. Yes, He's going to have to yes. show everybody, I'm here to do this. Not that over there right. and that over there. I'm going to do this. Mm. Right. So that's that's so what I think. Is we might not get anybody, and you want LeBron. Well, what I, else is he going to do? Okay I mean, is he going to sulk for the next three years? I'm just saying, like he has to. If he don't get any, if he doesn't get a superstar, I see an Appomattox courthouse in Virginia. I see a surrender. General Lee, when he walked in, there, uh, Ulysses S. Grant said, I, "We done." Come on, Chris. You know what's this. he supposed to do? What? Okay. What does that Wait, mean? He, I don't he even just, know what that he means. Just compared LeBron if they, James to Robert E. Lee. No, right. I'm saying he if got. They, if, he go oh. surrender. Okay. okay. If they don't right. get, let's say they don't get a great player. We'll get Kimba. We can get Kimba. But it's all right though to su surrender. We 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 we'll get we can get Kimba. Okay. We can get Kimba. Michael can't pay him two. Can't pay him two. No, he shouldn't. Because he damned if he do, damned if he don't. You know what I'm saying? No, but we've come all the way from. KD and, <laughs> yeah. and, and the guy up in Toronto down to, wait, Kimba and Marcus it's Morris. It's still and a K. I know, I know. I'm just, look, we do, we do but this. hold on, hold on. Okay. In Milwaukee, now Giannis doesn't know what LeBron knows, right? He hasn't been to the mountain, no. kept getting yeah. hitting that ceiling without yeah. a second star. But does he have a second star? Hmm. Well, in the East, does LeBron, Toronto LeBron, have a second Le star? LeBron would be in, LeBron would be in the Eastern Conference Finals in the East. Milwaukee might he, win he it all. He would be, I would agree. Le this year? Yep. I don't know. It's a different East now. Yeah. You, you mean if, if he had Cleveland intact from last like year? Like if he stayed in Cleveland mm -hmm. and they basically had the same team? And by the way, you're talking about front office that. stability. You guys were talking about Dan Gilbert last year at the trade deadline as the executive of the year <laughs> for all the moves he made wow. when he yep. got all the it, Lakers. Yeah, but you, you see how George Hill playing for Milwaukee? Right. You know Where was that George Hill in Cleveland, Skip? <sighs> and Rodney said, Hood. Did you see Rodney Hood? Portland. What he did? That's why LeBron deferred to him in the, the <laughs> golden moment. He had his shot at Oracle. Man, go ahead, Skip. Uh, this oh, year, George Hill would have <laughs> made that lap. He would have went up and dunked it oh, on the he <laughs> catch, he caught, You see him catch the lob? <laughs> George Hill was dominating. Yes, tonight. but you see Against what's left of the. Boston you see what I'm saying? Milwaukee doesn't have a second star. Por Toronto doesn't have a second star. But those two leaders are bought in. I'm not saying the Ward Lakers will uh, I mean, win, I mean, but he Middleton, has to do what you said. Middleton made the All Star team. Is that does that qualify as it's like Mo star? Williams made okay. it with LeBron? Oh, and and Siakam Cleveland. seems to be on his way to making something. Okay, he he is definitely. <laughs> so here's my takeaway. Jeannie Buss and Linda Rambis and Kurt Rambis have declared war, speaking of war, on LeBron James mm -hmm. because they just went through the all-time charade of trying to show that they were trying to kind of hire Ty Lue, but they didn't want to hire Ty we Lue. They tried. They wanted Monty Williams, and he left them high and dry in favor of the worst team in the NBA. He chose the <laughs> Phoenix Suns. 
it came to this. Die. So you lost Magic Johnson, who just said, I'm out. I've had it with you people. I'm out. And then you lost your number one choice, really your only choice for your next head coach, Monty Williams. Was he LeBron's guy? He was not. Would LeBron been okay with him? He knows him because that's He's not with paths. Clutch, but he, right, yeah, right. they would have been okay. fine. They would have been just fine. Plan B was not Ty Lu. Plan B was to charade their way around Ty Lu by offending him, insulting him with, with a low ball offer that was so bad that Ty Lu finally said, seriously? <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. And now you get to go to plan C, which is, I, I don't know, but, but I'm not going to rule out Kurt Rambis. I said this earlier in the no, show, no, but he has been a head coach in this league and he a had a bad one. You know what his record one. is? I, I know what it was in Minnesota. Minnesota. 65 and 164. Okay. 38%. 32 and 38? 132 in two years. Yeah. Two years coaching her team in Minneapolis with Kevin Love We've as the about star. Those you know, it, <laughs> it, it was a, Pathetic, but, but Kurt Rambis is 61 years of age, and his wife is now the shadow owner of the Lakers. Are, are you sure he's not being positioned as the next head coach? Because I'm not sure about that. I, no, I think it's I think happening. you're making some sense. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I Ooh, thought you were when you growing. said when you said when this first happened, you said they could bring in Kurt Rambis, yep. which I thought was off. But okay, yeah. so he's sitting there on, on the back burner that could really be the front burner, and if that happens. Your man has to walk in the next day and say, get me out of here. I didn't sign up for this, and I don't want any more of this. And, and regardless of the lifestyle and Hollywood, if he cares 50% about competing next year, right. you've got to go somewhere else. I would demand yeah. a trade. You know what, Chris? My groin ain't healed yet. Uh-oh, <laughs> one of those deals. My, 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 groin, my here, groin ain't healed Here's yet. the challenge. Even if you want to trade LeBron, I was talking to a GM this morning, his market is not... Well, what? I'm sure it's not great. That's but. great. Because, number one, now, if he says he wants out, that's different. But to just trade him, we know LeBron wants to be in L.A. So is he going to be bought in? That's the first thing. Yeah. Is it going, LeBron going to be unhappy here? Good point. Sulking. Number two, the perception. Whether LeBron and his guys will tell you it's not the reality. But the perception is that when LeBron comes in, he's taking over. He's running everything. And GMs don't want that. And the expectations become championship yeah. or bust. And, you know, GMs, some GMs sell hope. You know, they sell, we got draft picks. We got a future. And that pressure, if you don't win that championship with LeBron, you might lose your job. Hmm. And then, fourthly, ah. we'll see. But there are a lot of executives around the league that feel like LeBron's not quite what he used to be. Hmm. And defensively, we know he's not. But no. they're looking at like, yeah, he's still great, but he's not what he was a couple okay, of years ago. Hypothetically, if right now Danny Ainge traded for LeBron James and said, I want you to run our show, I want you to orchestrate it as our, our point guard with, with all the kids that they have who probably got Kyrie this year because he was dominating the ball and taking a lot of bad shots, would those kids start to rise and shine? You do have lots of you capital. You have to give them up, Skip. Huh? You have to give up some of them to get LeBron. Okay, maybe, but you got draft picks that you can right. give up. And you still got cap room in which you could go out if you had LeBron and you might be able to go get somebody and else. you might be able to coach Kyrie to come back. Mm -hmm. Two places make it. sense to me. Boston, yep. that's a good idea. And that's a great historic franchise sure. that would fit LeBron. I mean, you know. And, and Philadelphia. Okay, maybe. Now, Ben Simmons is represented by Clutch, so they'd have to be heavily involved. Maybe. But I would give up Ben Simmons for LeBron. And with MB, just because of the health okay. issues, right. the concerns, maybe I go that route. But those are the two that kind of make sense to me. Yep. Outside of that, it's hard. And go to back to the East where you got a little better shot. It's tougher though. We I go, think the East is we just going as to tough the Knicks. West now. Going to the Knicks. Yeah. Me, KD, and Kyrie. All three of you. Can we just take that a second a and acknowledge that we are talking about LeBron going somewhere else? Yeah. Like that's how bad it is it's in LA. That bad. We're talking about him leaving. Rossi, this is some bull digging. It, it's this is this is he never could have imagined. No, I mean this is not not even your worst nightmare. Mm -mm. You like okay, Magic's gonna resign and they going they're not gonna know what the hell they got go, going on. Mm. With that. No, this is this is terrible. Mm. If See Skip what you got feels bad for LeBron. We're not in a good place. Nope. That means we need uh, something you to need change a new quickly. Place. We need something different. Yeah, but you feel good. Now nah, he can't catch. Now nah, he can't catch MJ.
Mm. No, he can't kick no, him. No, I think Jay. this is well, genuine. That was already smart. over. No, it wasn't. Uh, that race is over. Not even there yet. As much as I like LeBron. Good stuff. Thank you for joining us today. How about the Cowboys? Uh, should some of their stars take a little hometown discount? Uh, why, why are you smiling over there? We'll discuss. No mercy. Let's get to the latest in Dallas. Stephen Jones said the Cowboys are, quote, off and running in contract talks with Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. Both of their deals are up at the end of this season, while Ezekiel Elliott is under team control through 2020. Yesterday, Jones talked about paying all of his stars and why they should take less money to stay in Dallas. Take a listen. It's not their job to manage the cap. I understand that. But it is my job and Jerry's job to, so that they will understand why we're negotiating hard uh, to make the very best deal we can because the money's, if we, if we, you know, if we can talk them into not maxing out, doing well but not, you know, not maxed, then that allows us to have other good football players around them. And we all know what happens. You just, you know, you look at the TV booths and you look at what these players do off the field. Uh, if we can put Super Bowl rings on these guys, then, you know, there'll be legends around this area for, for many, many, many years to come. And what they may give up a little bit in their contract, they should be able to invest, uh, you know, in being a cowboy and making our teams better. All right, we're joined by Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. Hey, Greg, uh, any truth to what Steven said there? All truth to what he's saying. All truth to what he's saying. Um, well, then let's go to the next question. Moving on. <laughs> when, I, when I listen to Stephen <laughs> Jones, what he's saying is exactly right. It's not the player's job to concern themselves with the salary cap. Mm -hmm. Correct. However, he understands that in order for us to keep this comprised roster that we have, which is very talented and very young, they have to take less. Everyone can't max out. We can't pay everyone top you dollar. Took less? Absolutely not. Okay, well, well. <laughs> here is. It's complicated. But then, when you look at it from a player's perspective, when you're told the value that you bring, you've been told you've earned this contract, mm -hmm. you've earned these numbers, mm -hmm. why would you then sit across the table and take less? That's the problem that you run into. And again, this is, this is a problem, a good problem for the Dallas Cowboys to have because they have drafted well and they have made a really good trade with Amari Cooper and acquired what they did in him and his assets. But when I look at the Dallas Cowboys, the only issue they have starts with Dak Prescott mm. because he sets the tone. And if he takes a max deal, then everyone else is going to say, I'm taking a max deal too. They're not going to take less. That's, that's been the, the, the key to success for the New England Patriots, and it's worked for them. Mm -hmm. It does not work for everyone else because everyone else is not Tom Brady, and everyone else doesn't have Bill Belichick in the scheme. And They're which one of them got married to Giselle? Which one of their wife make for, work for them? That as well. No one I know. Mm. Oh, okay. And so, when again, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys and what Stephen Jones is saying, it's all true. But players aren't thinking the same way because I've worked my butt off, especially a Dak Prescott, who was a later round draft pick, who has played himself into this position. You're now telling me. I'm making two million and less, and okay, but you're you telling me, me that Dak should set the early tone through all the negotiations. No, he said he will by, by taking a Dallas discount, right? I'm, I'm, that's the only way the other players okay. will we'll follow suit. So I believe he will take, as you call it, a little bit of a haircut, just mm -hmm. a little bit of a. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. It's for America's team's sake. It's for Super Bowl's sake. You know what? How about this here? You know what? I'm gonna do you this fast. I'm gonna do <laughs> Stephen Jones. You know what? You make a very good point. Mm. I'm gonna take a little less. Can you guarantee all of it though? Mm. Ah, how about this, <laughs> okay. You know what? I take a little less. Done. That's I'll take a little less. Yeah, I can speak for Stephen and Jerry. They done. Not, they're, not, they're, not <laughs> gonna, done. they're not gonna do that because yeah. I don't know, guys. I don't know how many guys were in there. Dan Bryant had two years left on his deal. Wait, what did he get it? Got cut. How many guys do we see have three years, four years left on a contract? When you don't meet expectations, what they do? They don't say, you know what? We're going to do this for the better. They do it for the betterment of the team. Well, so for me, I'm a team. Team Shannon. I need to do what's in the best interest of Team Shannon. Because hmm. you know I got mama to take care of. I got miles to feed. I got college to think about, Skip Bayless. Ain't no guarantee 
that mm -hmm. someone's going to call me and say they want me to be an on-air personality. Mm -hmm. And even if they do, yeah, he played for the Cowboys. But if he's not very good, that means you're not going to have that job very long. Skip, I need to get out of all that, mm. especially my set, my first big contract. Now, maybe me, talk to me down the road. If I get a couple of years under my belt, I might be willing to come to next contract. You know what? Y'all took care of me the last time around. Mm. I'm going to give you a little discount this time around. But not the first, not at the gate for it, Skip. Mm -hmm. Not the first time. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, Shannon Sharp would yeah. like every Dallas Cowboys <laughs> star to do what's in the worst interest of the Dallas Cowboys because he wants them to fail because he is scared to death. They're going to be as great as I think they're about to be over the next two years. What about the best interest of the player? I thought you were no, the players. Uh -uh. This is all about America's team and Super Bowls, and they are on the verge. The quarterback needs to set the tone. Get what Max everybody Hill. needs to that. understand is, no offense to you guys, but this isn't Denver or Baltimore. Mm. This is not Green Bay mm -hmm. or Minnesota. This is Dallas, Texas. This is the capital of the NFL. This is America's team. There's nothing like being a Cowboy in Dallas. As great as it is to be a Bronco in Denver or a Packer in Green Bay or for that matter, a Viking in Minneapolis. I don't know, Packer, Packer, you know. Yeah. If somebody, no, I mean, from, skip, no. don't you bit, you know, Yeah, but it's, it's, I mean, hey. you win a Super Bowl there now. It's a little bit of different cloth. You, you, you win something in Dallas, it, it is, you are a made man for the rest of your career. And you do have inroads into various TV booths because everybody wants a piece of America's team because America's team sells, it rates. And again, we talked about this earlier. Tony Romo, Troy Aikman got their shots because they were Cowboy quarterbacks. Uh, they they you then white lived Cowboy up. quarterback. Okay, all right, I'll give you that. Daryl Johnson, mm -hmm. white. Okay, Cowboy football. Darren Woodson, not a white. But skip, he but, skip. Yep. These the, sit around the desk on the morning show. Yep. That's a whole different ball game. It the is. booth, you know that, Skip. Do I? <laughs> also, a very many of those jobs available. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They come up yeah. every so. There's often. one guy. There's one guy in the booth. There's like four guys sitting at a table. Yes. Okay. All right, I, I got you. But I covered Darren Woodson, and I liked the heck out of him. He's still a close friend of mine. Mm -hmm. But he did not have or show a scintillating personality while he was a leader of the Dallas Cowboys dynasty teams. Mm -hmm. But once he got his shot at ESPN, he seized it, and all of a sudden a personality came out that I didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. But he got his foot in the door because he was that guy for that team, you right? Be, you believe Dion would be on the air if he didn't play for the Cowboys? Well, Dion played for everybody. Okay, so. what about Mike? Do you Mike. believe Mike with his personality had he not played for the Cowboys? Well, he had a big, bold no, probably, personality. Well, had, well, had he not played for the Cowboys, he, was he, might, he, he might have been in jail if he had not played for the Cowboys. So <laughs> you might be right. Skip. No, he he would have avoided jail if he had played elsewhere. Because oh. No, he wouldn't have. It's Sin City, man. No, no, no. He wouldn't have avoided no, jail. No, no. <laughs> Some of the things he had going on. Uh, well, you, you could be right about that. <laughs> but, but look, Stephen Jones is just speaking the painfully obvious mm -hmm. that you, you can't make every player on the roster, and it is star studded, and they're all becoming stars. You can't make every one of them the highest paid at their positions because that won't no, fit no, no, under no. the cap. Not the highest paid, but I need to be top three, top five. And, and they're deserving of it. They are. But yeah. all, he said that. Yes. He said, I wish I could so you, max them out because so they've all said, So you said I deserve the job, but you won't give me the See, job. And that, and that in, in lies a problem in and of itself because once I hear you say it out of your own mouth, right. then I'm going to come back and make That's sure what you're you... Saying. That's what you said. You, you put it you on said, paper. You said I took off. You said your offense took off when I showed up. You said your quarterback took off when I showed up. Okay. So now, all that being true, you want me to do what? The, but the problem, the problem of what happens with these contracts is, let's say, let's say Amari Cooper gets paid and Ezekiel Elliott get, then gets paid. Dak Prescott is going to get paid. He's a quarterback that's going to be stapled. But what happens two and three years down the road, same thing what happens to Sean Lee. You draft, you continue to draft well. Sure. Now we have to restructure your deal. Okay. It's to your back to your point. If it's not fully guaranteed, I can re restructure this deal to where now you're gonna take a little less mm. because we gotta pay the next guys coming mm. up. You got Jalen Brown, Byron, Jones. Byron Jones, you got all these players that are stars that, great, that, that hold so much so value. many great problems. Well, They're and, all and, stars. Hold on. Not only he got stars, but who is the most what's the most valuable franchise in all the world? Yeah, okay. So he got money. To your point, <laughs> why didn't all these players, why didn't you guys, when you had your shots, 
negotiate for no salary cap. You, you could, baseball has no salary cap. Do you know what Jerry Jones would do with no salary cap? He owns a billion dollar yacht. Yeah. What, what do you think he would do if it was an uncapped sport? I'm all for it. Okay. All right. <laughs> but go, he, go win it. But, go but, fight but, for but it. But Jerry was the only owner that wanted the uncapped. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Jerry, was the, Jerry was the only one. No. None of the other guys wanted that. Jerry would win endless Super yeah. Bowls. That oh, one. yeah. Of yeah. course. Okay. That would be the well, Yankees. But that's not, I mean, yeah. really, yeah. can you have free agency if there's a cap? I thought free agency was the ability to go out and get whatever the market would bear. Mm -hmm. So if it, not position wise, I mean, because they don't say, okay, you play first base, you can only get 25 million, mm -hmm. and you play right field, you can only get 22 million. Mike Trout, you okay, you can get this. Manny yes. Machado, you can get that. Bryce mm -hmm. Harper, you can get that. Whatever it is, yes. it's not position based. Mm -mm. It's talent and production yes. based. Okay. So pay me accordingly. Mm. But oh, quarterbacks, he's the most important, the most valuable, so he has to make the most. No, no. If I'm Von Miller is that more valuable than any mm. quarterback in Denver, mm. so he should have to take less mm. because he plays a, a rush linebacker. Shannon, you know what, Skip, you are in trouble. I'm not in trouble. <laughs> That's what this is. The bottom line for this discussion this is you're in big and, and, trouble. And, Jer and, and Stephen keeps selling these dreams on Super Bowls. When the last time you put one on somebody's finger, yeah, Stephen? It's been a while. You want to remind us? When last time? We just moved how on. Was I don't that? want to remind us. <laughs> okay. how, was, how was Zeke when last time they put a, a ring on somebody's finger? I ain't mm. no Beyonce song was going. They ain't put mm. no ring on it in a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Well before that. Okay. We still got plenty of work to do before we're talking about rings. Greg, mm. thank you for thank you. joining us. Well, the Warriors win even without KD. Oof. Still waiting to hear about the severity of his injury. We'll discuss. No mercy. Kevin Durant will have an MRI today after leaving last night's game with what the Warriors called a calf strain. Steve Kerr told The Athletic, quote, he's not going to play game six. We can all pretend and just say he's doubtful, but he's not playing. Mm -hmm. Last night, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson all played well after Katie's injury. Mm -hmm. So, Shannon, can mm -hmm. the Warriors win tomorrow night without Durant? Sure they can, because they did it at the, Skip, you said March 13th. They went to Houston sure. without Kevin Durant, they and they won the ball game. 106-104 by two. But they Will won. they win tomorrow night? Yeah. No. I got, I got the Rockets winning tomorrow night, but I believe they go back to Golden State because I picked Golden State, and I did yeah. anticipate them having Kevin Durant. But I believe even without Kevin Durant, they'll win game seven. Mm. But sure they can win. Um, Steph Curry looked like Steph Curry in the fourth quarter, and after Kevin, so basically from the time Kevin Durant got injured until the end of the ball game, Steph Curry looked like Steph Curry. Mm. And Klay Thompson looked like Klay Thompson. And they started playing like we remember them playing before they got Kevin Durant. So, sure, they can win. I don't anticipate them winning, but sure, they can win because they're still a very, very talented. But it just goes to show you, Skip, this is why everybody thought it was so unfair because we look at this team and we see what they look like without Kevin Durant. And then you bring a seven-foot monster into <laughs> the building and you wonder why no one can beat them in a seven-game series. It's true. <clears throat> I did pick Houston before this series because I just thought Golden State was going down before the finals. I wasn't sure how or who or why, how, how they would be taken down, but I thought Golden State would beat Golden State. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the tables have completely wildly turned, and now <laughs> Golden State is <laughs> going to Houston as a seven-and-a-half-point dog. Yeah. They're now – the underdog, the hopeless underdog in this series, and yet I just watched what happened when you handed James and CP3 and company here on a silver platter, Take here's this, this game. Take this one. And then you can go home and close it out if you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to remind everybody, when Draymond got that ridiculous technical foul, <laughs> which he just lost it, and he had to get even with CP3 and gave him a little nudge, yeah. you know, more than a nudge. Well, he need he <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he need him. Yeah. He got the technical. It was still a two-point game. It's just, it's begging for Houston to win it. And I told you earlier in the show, if they can't win that game, then I'm, <laughs> I'm done with them because I don't think they have the intestinal fortitude or the basketball backbone to be able to win this game at home as a seven-and-a-half-point favorite. Do you know how that's going to play 
on the emotions of especially a James Harden. You're in the spotlight, man. That's a lot of pressure. You're, you're the guy, and we've seen him come up so small in a closeout game six at home against Without the Mike team's Spurs. best player. Yeah. With no, at home. No Tony Parker and no number two in that game. And you come up that small? What did he lose, by 40? Yeah, by 40. It was the all-time <laughs> meltdown disappearance. And, and, again, we saw James last year in back-to-back -back games, game six and game seven. Again, no CP3, but you're up three to two right. with a home game to close, close out. And yeah. then, if, if necessary, you're going to go back up there, but you got a game seven. Right. What did he do? He shot a combined six for 25 from three. He had 14 combined turnovers in game six and game seven. I, would, wouldn't this set up for another disaster for James Harden? It, it better not be, Skip. Well, you, you, again, Jenny brought this up. You want to talk about legacy on the line? This is it, man. Yeah. He, because now you are expected to be regular season James Harden. You're expected to go for 40 or maybe 50. Fitty in this yeah. game, right? Whatever, this, whatever, this, whatever, whatever it it's going to take. Yeah. Ex exactly yeah. right. And that's the problem. I believe once they saw Kevin Durant skip, and we see this a lot of times, regardless of the sport, when the team's best player leaves, yeah. the other opposing team relaxes, mm -hmm. oh, we got them now. Yep. They can't win without their best player. Yep. Okay, yes, they can, mm. because they won without their best player before they ever had their best player. They did. Steph Curry is still there. Klay Thompson is still there. You're talking about two of the top five shooters of all time, a two-time MVP, and Draymond can do some of everything really, really well. He was two points away from a triple-double last he night. He was, but, but he failed in the points. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, usually yeah. you don't <laughs> fail in the points. He had only eight points. Mm. But he – and I just, like, James, you – I couldn't believe it, Skip. And I'm looking, I'm like, why isn't James Harden handling the ball and why isn't he shooting the ball in this moment? Now, you're going to defer. You're like, okay, Gordon, you handle this. Okay, CP3, you handle this. No, James, this is your moment. Hmm. This is your time to shine. Austin Rivers, you handle it. I was like, I, can, I couldn't believe it, Skip. And, mm. you know, normally, because mm. normally, you know, I save my best stuff for you. Yep. Beat you down. But I had, to, I had to put that out there last night. Did I had you? To. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> on what? On Twitter. I was disappointed. You're, you're on social media? Sometimes. Are you on Twitter? Sometimes. I didn't know you were on Twitter. Whatever. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm going to catch you, though, for, mm. before long. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm trying. He's and, trying. And I'm not sure Houston's going to catch Golden State. They'll get them. <laughs> they'll get them. Yeah. They'll get, em, they get em in game uh, three. They'll get them out of game Boy, six. I, I sure hope you're right about that. But it's going now, seven. Now you're telling, the, you're telling Steph, Clay, Draymond, and Iggy, <laughs> who were all part of a team that won a record all-time record, 73 games, 73 and nine they went. You're telling them they're seven and a half point underdogs mm -hmm. going up against a team in their building in which you beat them on March 13th by two with no Kevin Durant. So you got to feel pretty good about your But they did have, didn't they have Boogie? They had, they they had, had Boogie, Boogie, though. They had Boogie. And Boogie did a number But, on but that night, the two scores were Clay with 30 and Steph with 24, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And, and, again, James that night went two for 12 from three, and they lost by hey, two. Hey, Capella. Mm -hmm. Remember what you said a, a week ago? Yep. You wanted Back Golden State. You wanted Golden State. Yeah. Uh, because of how it ended last year. Yep. Okay, you got Golden State without Kevin Durant. So when are you gonna give? What is this? Mm. I don't know. Seven and a half points, though. That says something. It's a lot. That is a lot. Every Ooh. game this series has been decided by six points or less. So and and remember, the seven and a half is going to send a message to Steph and Clay. You guys are nothing without Which is the seven foot monster. Which does you say like a lot. that? And they, they watch them. Um, watch both of them combine for like 22 threes. <laughs> know, they pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> they know. They have to shoot 22 threes. It's going to be over for you. Will the Sixers stay alive tonight, or are they going packing? Uh, we'll make some predictions. No mercy. Yesterday, we had some huge news. Fox and the Stars Group announced plans to launch Fox Bet. It's yeah. the first of its kind national media and sports wagering partnership in the U.S. Yeah. Kicks off in the fall with two new products, a nationwide free-to-play game with cash prizes uh -oh. to players who correctly predict the outcome of sports games mm. and the Fox Bet app. Yep. So that's going to give customers in states with regulated betting the opportunity to place real money wagers. Fox Sports is truly all in. Mm. This is a big deal. I mean, Skip. That was a great read, Jenny. It's Way to go. It's pretty cool. It's nailed exciting. It. This you is big it. for this Fox. This is big because now this man and I can bet through the app. We can bet some real money I don't know if I games. like this. It's yes. worrisome. No more diet do they take, for us. Do they accept do? Yeah, that's, they all, that's all I no. got for them. Do you realize I have friends who ask me, is, is diet do just code for like a stack, you know, like for no. a brand? No. 
Oh, yeah, he no. don't want to bet no real. Oh, he don't want to break no else. real cake. Yeah. He's scared. Yeah. This could get messy you wanna break, for you. We could bet real paper. Be great. I'm talking about real paper. Okay. Yeah. Well, you guys are going to be trying go. it out. Yeah. Okay, real yeah. paper. All right. Okay. All right. It's exciting. Jenny, you want in too? No, not with you two. <laughs> We're working with different kind of budgets around here. Let's go back to the NBA playoffs. Maybe uh, Skip and Shannon want to make a wager on this one. Yes, the Raptors not. are a slight favorite tonight on the road as they try to eliminate the Sixers. Kawhi Leonard has been the story for Toronto, averaging about 35 points, 10 rebounds in the series. On the Philly side, Joel Embiid has been battling a respiratory infection, and uh, he's only scored more than 20 points once in the series. He's been dealing with everything. Shannon, who wins tonight? I'm going to take the Raptors. Mm, uh, Skip, shocking. I, mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that that, it, that uh, virus is still going around. I heard the virus in Philly goes around about three weeks. Yep. And, West uh, Nile, he's yeah. done. <laughs> and ben, yes. and yes. ben Simmons, Skip. I mean, he's being unscathed. We, we've been beating up on Joel Embiid, mm. and rightfully so. But Ben Simmons doesn't have an excuse. There's no injury that we know of. Mm. There's no uh, health-related issues as far as respiratory or virus or flu or anything like that that we know of. So there's no excuse for him mm. to play as bad as what he's been playing. Yep. And unless – and the thing is, not only is he not shooting the ball, he's not getting to the rim, he's not getting fouled, so he's not going to the free throw line so he can get cheap points. Mm. So with all that being said, and they don't have an answer for Kawhi, I'm going to take the Raptors to close this thing out mm. and get ready to head up to Milwaukee. Mm, gutsy of you. Play Saturday, just Sunday. really gutsy. What do you mean, Skip? I picked the Raptors to start. You did. You got me on the run now, but I picked the Sixers, and I am not backing down. But I must admit, I now have the Embiid flu from watching no. Embiid, the, the walking dead that was Joel Embiid. And I am hoping against hope that tonight, Joel Embiid is shut down. I don't want to see him huh? play tonight. Well, this you know is, it's over then. Th no, no, I do not know it's over because this is at home, closeout game. And again, Toronto opened as a one and a half point favorite, been bet up to two points. So again, this should go up on the Philly Bulletin board. You guys are being disrespected as a basketball team because Toronto is supposed to come in here and clean you out and send you home on vacation. What? And I'm still here to say, Philly is the mentally tougher basketball team. Jimmy Butler is mentally tough. Yeah. J.J. Redick is mentally tough. He will make and take big shots. Okay. And listen, I have seen Ben Simmons rise and shine at Brooklyn. I'm going to say it one more time. When he was pushed to the wall, mm -hmm. Jared Dudley called him out. You can only play in the in, in transition, court. right? Right. You're not very good. You're average in half court. Half court. He rose and shown by making 11 of 13 shots and 9 of 11 free throws. He is highly capable okay. of doing just that. I don't want to see Joel Embiid just teetering around on the court, throwing balls into the fourth row because this team feeds off his bad body language. I'd just rather see it come out and take a stand at home and say, we're better than this. And I'm going to say this again. Mark my words. If you get number two into the fourth quarter of a tight, close, closeout playoff game, he will fade down the stretch. Write those words down. Fade down the stretch. I got it. Mark, I got it. Yep. Yep. You just words. watched. But it's got to be close and tight. The pressure has to be mounting on the visiting team to close this out. I hear what you're saying about Ben Simmons and what he did to the uh, Nets, but if you don't mind me asking, which one of those defenders is a two-time Defensive Player of the Year. Mm. Because that's what he's going up against. Mm. Oh, Claw! Claw, mm. lock him down. Mm. Lock him down. Mm. You remember that? You know, they had that warning poster. I was just going to say that. Kawhi got it. Missed he it. pulled it out. Yep. Yeah, he pulled it out. Where is the ask? Yep. You know he can't do nothing with Claw. Mm. And Claw giving it to you on the other end. Mm. The best two-way player in the game, you mm. know that. Mm. I know that. Mm. See Claw, what was it, game three, the fourth quarter, he scored no baskets, and then he came right back. Game four, you said it was a virtuoso performance. Virtuoso. And he had two late crucial turnovers. 39. Yep. And Jen, if you don't, can you read me uh, uh, Claw's number on show enough? What did he average What are you talking about? Oh, How Kawhi. much he's averaging? Yeah. Uh, let's 35, see. 35 points and rebounds mm. in the series. Mm. Is that 35. good? Is 35 points Does that good? count the four free throws he missed in the fourth quarter? Count, they, they, took all that into the they, they, they took all thing. that into consideration. Really? Yeah. Oh. And he had 21 the other night. And if they wasn't up by 40, you know, he might have had 41. He's turning into the new LeBron because he'll you just stuff that statue. You know, no, no, no. But when it's time to come up clutch, claw you know, goes unclutch. How about this here? Yeah. He might not come up clutch, mm. but he won't let your best player come up clutch either. Mm. How about that? 
Well, if I, I can't I got score, several best players. I got other options. No, you don't. JJ Redick will make big shots. Just really? watch. Just watch. If, you they, really? if they actually run, you want you want you want to pin elimination on JJ Redick. I do. I that do. what you want to do? I'll take that. You want to, you, you you don't think Jimmy Butler is tough? Yeah. Physically tough. Yeah. Physically tough. He got his hand full yeah. with Siakam. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about Embiid Siakam's though? Emerging. What you gonna do? What you gonna do with Embiid? Mm. I'm going to watch him sit. That's what I'm going to do tonight. Watch him sit. Well, maybe sit. there's a, some medicine in that stat sheet that he was reading on the bench the other yeah. night. <laughs> what was he looking for? Might have been some. Oh. Checking his numbers. Oh, yeah, he was looking at, oh, Joel and B. What he was doing? I played like dog poo. Mm. That's what he said. That's what that the stat sheet said. Yeah. No, he was saying, no. look, through three quarters, I was five out of ten. That looks okay. Whatever. Right? Yeah. No, he was, what are you saying? The eye test, no. he didn't really pass. I don't know what flu he has. I don't care because... I am out on Joel Embiid. Oh, no. Love him oh, no, I can't let you get out. I can't let yeah. you get away. Because you love oh, – he was airplaning, and then we had a discussion about him being a uh, – when he's done, he's going to be a Pantheon great. That's what oh, Jackson he, said. He got, a, he got a nice social media game. He mm -hmm. tweeting he it and getting on everybody. Now he what? Does. Yep. No, he's fine. I can't find. I can't find no tweets. Hmm. I follow Joel. I, I'm healthy. looking for. I'm like, well, what did you tweet on Joel? Cause you know Joel, he real funny on social media. Mm. I like, what he got to say now? Mm. Nothing. He's mm. got a bigger problem. Maybe he's zero dark thirty. Mm. Maybe the playoffs started and he's not gonna be tweeting. Mm. Maybe, is that what it is, Kev? I want to see him zero dark bench tonight. <laughs> Someone else loves social media. Uh, Rob Gronkowski is he yep. already thinking about a comeback? Oh my God. Uh, we'll discuss next. No mercy. Time for our final topic of the day. Have we really seen the last of Rob Gronkowski? Uh, Gronk retired in March, but former Patriot Rodney Harrison told WEEI that he feels Gronk will come back at some point in the middle of next season. Harrison mm. said, quote, I believe in the second half of the season he's going to get antsy. I think he'll be back. Shannon, do you mm. agree? I can see it happening. Hmm. You know, Skip, no training camp, no OTAs. Yep. Body starts to feel good. Yep. And then he'll come back and he'll get out there and then he'll realize that, you know what, what it's like to play, be an NFL player once you start taking those hits. Hmm. And now he's not having to worry about any of that. And I think he's like 29 years of age. And most 29-year-olds, they don't have body aches of a 29-year-old football player. No. So I can see it happening, but he'll be in for a rude awakening mm. because he realized there's the rigors and the pains mm. of being an NFL football mm. player. So you know who's going to get really antsy about midseason? Number 12, the quarterback, Tom Brady, is going to have no tight end target because as we speak, there is, is there's is. no tight end listed on the depth chart. Ben Watson. Zero. Oh. He's in for a visit. Yeah. Ben Watson is 38 years of age, going on 39. He had a decent year for New Orleans last yeah. year. I like Ben Watson. <laughs> But is he Gronk at age 29? Well, who is Gronk other than Gronk? And Gronk wasn't Gronk last year, okay. except in he two was, playoffs. It wouldn't have mattered. He was Gronk. Yeah, right? but come on, Skip. Uh -huh. but you, hold on. You just came. Mm. Okay, we're in the playoffs. Yeah. You got a 16-game stretch here. Okay, and we'll you know come how back can... week nine to sort of play your way into shape. It'll work. Okay. And he's about to turn 30. So is Coach Belichick going, does Coach Belichick strike you as someone that signs <laughs> off on someone that he feels that's shortcutting the process? Tom Brady dictates what Bill Belichick No, he does not. Yes, he does. No, that no. franchise run by number 12, no, no. as it should be. No, no, he went upstairs yeah. and cried to daddy. Yeah. yeah, so if he says, I want Gronk, daddy will say, get him Exactly. Gronk. I don't like when we call him daddy. Well, that's what he called. That's what he called. That's what he called. That's that's him. Gonna cry. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports One. Of one, of one, of one.